it's hard to see the messages there on my phone. So I've got to do them down here on my computer. So it might look like I'm looking away from you. So I'll give it a minute here to catch up and whatnot, I suppose. Um, you guys let me know if, uh, if you can hear me. We'll see what the, what the stream looks like and all that stuff. All right, it looks like, okay. I think we're in good shape for the shape we're in. I better turn off my radio. Turn that down. Perfect. Audio's okay. I just want you to know that, um, I just want you to know that I don't want you to know anything. I just want to know if it sounds good, looks good. It's not all like Mr. Roboto over here. I think I probably ought to move it so it doesn't look like I'm looking away from you. But anyhow, what's up? It's a what's up Wednesday. I don't know how you guys are doing, where you're at in the world. Um, people are from all over the place. Here comes the chat. It's going to get kind of stupid. I don't mean like bad stupid, it's just it gets kind of crazy here. Um, let me see if I can find a different spot for you. Probably can't, probably should have th thought of all this before you started, you ding dong. We're just going to leave you guys up here and I'm going to glance my eyes away from you from time to time to see the chat going on down here. Everybody says that it sounds good, um, so that's good. I'll try to look you in the eyes. I don't like it when I'm running a stream and looking away. Open up my uh, sparkling water. It is the uh, black cherry variety from the Wegmans. Uh, fantastic. Tastes like if you've ever had the Dr. Pepper cream soda. If you've ever had that, it kind of tastes very similar to that. Obviously, you know, no sugar or anything in the sparkling waters, but it tastes really good. I really like this kind. This is what gets it, and I drink quite a bit of it. Pretty good stuff. It's super bubbly. And I'm having a hard time today. I'll be honest with you, uh, many of you have noticed, maybe you've noticed and haven't said anything, but you noticed that I got braces. I got braces probably six months ago or so, five or six months ago, I guess it would be. And um, thanks, Junker Clunkers. Uh, glad to hear you started the channel, man. That's cool. I'll have to go check it out. But at any rate, get back to what I was saying is some of you have noticed that I've got a grill now. I've got some porcelain braces on my top and some regular metal braces on the bottom and I had to have a bunch of tooth work done because when I was a kid, I didn't listen to my parents. And if you're a kid and you're listening, listen to your parents, especially if they're paying your dental bill. Take advantage of it. I didn't because I knew better than my mother and I knew better than my father. So I didn't listen to them. Therefore, they didn't waste their money on my dental needs. I guess they did to a certain degree until I was just old enough to just not take care of myself, which I didn't do. And then I'm paying for it as an older person. So I'm a 43 year old man with braces. And uh, <laughs> so I'm fixing my grill. My teeth are friggin' jacked up. Didn't take care of them. I've had a lot of extractions. I've had a lot of cavities. And my mouth, frankly, was hurting. And it's my own fault. So. I've taken care of that now. I say all that to say this, that I had a dental appointment today and the problem with my mouth structure is that it's too narrow, supposedly. This is what the orthodontist tells me and I need to spread my jaw this way. So I've got this spreader. Uh, I don't know what I could call it. It's this metal thing that's underneath my tongue and it attaches to my two molars in the back and then it expander, I guess they call it, that expands the width of your lower jaw, and then I got to have one in my upper jaw. Well, the orthodontist told me it's going to suck. She's a, um, a foreign lady. I don't, I don't know where she's, where she's from or what her nationality is, but she tells me that it's going to suck, and she's right. It kind of sucks, and I guess I'm going to have it for a few years, so get used to it. It's in the way of my tongue, so it becomes hard to speak and say certain syllables like S's and Z's and certain words. And it's not the type that has to be adjusted with the keys. It's 
I don't know, they took a 3D image of my mouth and they come back with this fancy bent wire. And the problem is that I have some, what, some of my canines that have moved in behind my other teeth and they need to push them out. And they need like, she tells me like seven or eight millimeters of room between other teeth, which are essentially touching now. I don't know how that's possible, but that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with my teeth and it hurts and it sucks and it's, it's hard to eat and it's making my tongue freaking raw. So I should have just done it when I was a kid because A, I wouldn't be $10,000 in the hole for stupid braces and everything else that's going on in here. The braces weren't 10 grand, the braces were $6,000 plus you know, $4,000 worth of other work. Not to whine and cry at you, but it's just, uh, it's just a fact of life. I should have done it, it would be a lot easier pill to swallow when my parents are paying for it. <laughs> So this guy wants to know how those power stop brake kits are working. I'll tell you what, the power stop brakes that I put on Mr. Ozman have been absolutely fantastic. So much so that I've been thinking about getting some for the Tundra. Um, so anyhow, yeah, no, great, absolutely great. I'm not a big uh, weenie as far as saying, oh, it's little dust and this and that. I'm saying like you go down the road and they don't go when you hit the, hit the brakes, you know, they're nice and smooth, and quiet, so. I can't complain about them, but <laughs> for the dental fund, no, I don't need a dental fund, Steve-O, uh, I, I do appreciate that, I'm not sitting here crying in my soup about that, it's just crying in my soup about, I should have done it when I wasn't 43 years old, is when I should have done it, so that's the problem, but it's all, uh, it's all good now, right? Um, couple of snaps repeatedly, uh, let's see, you're for, for, oh, hang on there, fella. I'm from crazy a couple of stops repeatedly to bother you. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I remember old Jay Tizzo. So, <laughs> for the golden grill. Now, I'm not getting a golden grill. I got, they're clear. You see, the top ones are clear. There's still brackets that go on. And, and uh, anyhow, but uh, I guess I'll get used to it. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, Shelby. So, she says I'll get used to it. And I guess she can put, wax and crap i've never done any of that stuff and i tell you the difference between working with the actual orthodontist and working with one of the the ladies that work for her, which are all nice ladies but this you know the orthodontist lady you can tell the dexterity that she has doing her job you can tell she's a craftsman she does a great job you know so much so that like when they're one of the other nurse i don't know if they're called nurses dental assistants when they do stuff on you you know they're kind of fiddly and you know, sending the ligature bands, they send them things flying. And when this lady comes in, she's just like, boop, boop, and it's all done. And it's perfect and nothing hurts. And anyhow, you can just tell the experience, even from watching a carpenter or watching a mechanic who's experienced or somebody that works with their hands. And then right down to this dentist lady, I'm like, oh yeah, this, this girl's got some skills. So she's a nice lady. Yeah, shout out to my ortho lady. Don't know her name. I know her last name, but I'm not gonna give her a shout out like that. I don't want you people calling her up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so now my son has braces. Of course, he's a young guy and we're paying for it. So, hopefully, I'm just hoping at the end of it all, hoping at the end of it all that it's, that it's, that I have a nice smile. And um, that, that's all. I just wanted to have nice teeth, I guess. Um, <laughs> something for the bourbon fund. That's how you fix braces, just getting drunk. <laughs> um, this guy's hoping that we had a successful deer season. We did. Um, we all did quite well. Um, our freezer is full, so much so we had to buy a different freezer, an extra freezer. Um, we had a really good year. Oh, you got, oh, I can't even show you pictures because they're all up here on my phone. Uh, I got two nice bucks. Got a nice buck on my bow. Got a really nice buck on my gun. Same with Mrs. O. She got a buck last Sunday. I guess what Sunday morning she shot a real nice buck and then my son my oldest son he got a real nice buck nice 10 point on the youth hunt so that and then we shoot a bunch of does so um yeah anyways how long will this procedure last George asked a couple of years they're thinking because I'm old <laughs> and my teeth move kind of slow I am pretty impressed though that how fast your teeth move you know my mine are freaking jacked up so they put your top braces on first I guess it was and of course, after I had to have a bunch of work done, and I was quite impressed how fast they actually they move, you know. And it's pretty interesting. You start going on YouTube, 
and uh, Botox next? No. But you know what's frigged up, Bob? Is I was at the dentist, and I just told Vanessa that too. I said, you know the dentist does Botox? I'm like, I don't. So once I get all done, I can get some pouty lips, I guess. I I'm not real sure. <laughs> I don't know why the dentist does Botox, but they do. Um, but anyhow, <laughs> I was going to tell you that I saw on the YouTube. So I was kind of curious how much money, you know, a dentist makes or an orthodontist makes, or can you DIY your own braces? All right. So yes, is the answer to that question. <laughs> I don't think I'd recommend it because there is a certain amount of skill, obviously, that's involved in knowing what you're doing. I mean, yeah, you can pull the engine out of your car too, but should you? <laughs> Probably not, you know. Um, but at any rate, on YouTube, there are videos about braces and how they work. And you can go on Amazon and buy brackets and buy the bands and buy the different size wires and boom, <laughs> you can DIY your braces. Of course, you can probably really jack your teeth up too. Um, but anyhow, <laughs> I guess that's it. So you want to DIY it, probably wouldn't suggest it. But if you do, uh, go on the YouTube. There's a lot of videos about it. And, uh, and I was telling you that because I was also curious about the profit or the markup on brace stuff. Um, yeah, what could go wrong, right? Yeah, DIY bracers. All you need is some of these. I mean, this looks like the stuff she's using. Don't get me wrong, my guy. <laughs> hey, what's up, Keith? L1L Diagnostics. Uh, but at any rate, you can buy the brackets that go on your teeth and the bands and everything for about 30 bucks on Amazon. I kid you not. Go look yourself. Uh, take your time. Go look. It's about 30 bucks. It costs $6,000 to have the dentist do it. So I'm thinking like, well, she told me, no, I asked her about this. I says, hey, look, you know, I said, I see these things on the Amazon. Of course, I'm saying it, you know, kind of loosely because I don't want her to, you know, get up in there and like start busting my teeth and, you know, being mean. But, you know, just letting her know. And she laughed. She told me that they're cheap products, that they're probably made in China. And I'm thinking... Lady, you're buying these things in bulk. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, maybe she, uh, <laughs> you know, she's probably paying 25 bucks a packet. And I told her, I said, don't worry, because listen, I ain't going to DIY this lady. I'm not going to go on the Amazon and just start sticking these things all over my teeth, all right? So I was just letting her know. I was just kind of curious. So the way I look at it is she pocketed probably, you know, $5,975. <laughs> but she knows what she's doing, and I'll pay for that. And two, I get to go see her once a month for like the next two years. So really, is, is she really making out that good? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't care as long as she knows what she's doing and it works. We'll see. Yep, $30 for braces, $5,970 because she knows how to put them on. You know, it ain't no different than that old story they tell you about the guy with the hammer that goes over and hits the machine and gets it running and costs a thousand bucks. Well, it's not, all he did is hit it with a hammer, but the thousand bucks is he knew where to hit it with the hammer, right? <laughs> so, Invisalign, no. You want to know, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what started this whole expedition a little bit here. Um, let me just check this one here. Frustrated mechanic here, your diagnostic bill has taught me so much and helped me to avoid the parts cannon. But the boss has a belief that if I save customer money, I'm cutting into the shop profits. Well, Hot Rod, listen to your boss. Do what he says. If you think he's a prick, well, your toolbox has wheels on it. I suggest you load her up and move on to greener pastures. But I'll tell you what, if you guys want to know, being that we're getting deep and dark into our secrets here. Not that you guys are sharing me any deep, dark secrets. But uh, <laughs> so what, what kind of kicked the ball rolling on this? is A, I know my teeth were crap. Like, I know I had crappy teeth. I knew that. That's why I never smile and I don't show my teeth. And, and probably a lot of you guys are in the same boat if you're being perfectly honest with yourself. Somebody takes a picture, you, you give them one of these. Same thing we always give them. And uh, you don't show your teeth because you got cavities or they're stained or they're crooked. And, you know, maybe you're ashamed of it. And, you know, I was and I have been for lots and lots of years. And one point... This was like a year or two ago. A viewer who was a dentist, sent me a toothbrush. And at that point, I didn't, I didn't think much of it. I was like, well, 
you know, it just, yeah, I know, like, I know that my teeth are crap. Like, I know that. And I don't know if he sent me the toothbrush. It was an Oral-B toothbrush. I still have it, and I still use it as an electric one. And this guy sent me this toothbrush, and it just kind of, I'd already been kind of thinking about this, because you always think about it. And, um, you know, he sent me this toothbrush in the mail, and I, I don't remember it having a note or anything with it, but it kind of, you know, hit me right in the feels. And it was at that point where I said, you know what, you just got to get it done. And even if you think the dentist sucks, or you know it's going to hurt, and it's going to take a long time, you got to get it done. Let me interrupt your story. I always refer to people to your videos when I tell them I want to do proper diagnosis and they look at me because they'd rather load the parts cannon. Don't load the parts cannon, fella. Put it down. Point it in a safe direction. <laughs> Appreciate your super chat, buddy. But at any rate, he sends me this toothbrush and it, like I say, it just kind of hit me in the feels and it kind of solidified what I was already thinking and kicked the proverbial ball down the hill and got it rolling. Why didn't I want to go? Well, A, it's expensive. B, it hurts. Um, I'm right, from Houston, Texas. Uh, let's see, where we can change our ball joints in the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> oh man, I'm envious of you, Rex. Uh, we can change them in the Walmart parking lot, but you better have a torch with you and air compressor and stuff like that. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, yeah, I mean, the dentist, and, and, and in my mind, they hurt. You know, you gotta go. Your teeth are frigged up. You're embarrassed to go there. You don't want anybody to see him. And here's this guy. He's this close to your face the whole time looking at every flaw on you. You're, you're vulnerable. Um, what weight are my lifts there? 10,000 pound lifts. Um, do you have a hard time setting the rack on cars? I don't. I use the Challenger. They are the uh, Versimetric, I believe is what they call them. So they're kind of symmetrical and kind of asymmetrical, triple extending arms, and I can fit anything on them I want. Um, I really like them. Without going into great detail, I would definitely check them out. Made in the USA, so Challenger, not a sponsor. But at any rate, uh, you know, so you just go, you do it. And when you start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, it's, uh, it's a pretty good feeling. So I was... I was pretty happy to get through it and, you know, got a good relationship with my, my dentist, Dr. Isaiah. Whoop, whoop. Shout out to him. Uh, good dude. Hooked me up. Does a nice job. We'll do it with or without the Novocaine. So, anyhow, that's probably enough about this. Jim Fixit says, SNMA saved his DIYA dot dot more than once. Thanks, Dr. O. No problem, Jim. Fuck me to save your butt. <laughs> um, anyhow, what did Rain Man Ray show up in here? I think somebody's talking about Rain Man. Oh, there's some Rain Man Ray up in here. What's up, Rain Man Ray? Coming up in the. He had a uh, live stream the other day. Accidental live stream, he tells me. He had like a half a million people in there. <laughs> so, Alan writes, he says, have the. Uh, there he is. Wants to know if, if, if my hearing's been affected by my shop. Yeah, it has. Because just like I take poor care of my teeth, I also take poor care of my hearing and my lungs and my eyes. So, yeah, it's kind of screwed up. Hey, Ray, I seen something. I seen somebody type something on your channel talking about your screaming goat. And I'm kind of curious, so I've got the easy button. That was easy. Okay, <laughs> and I also have a screaming goat. I didn't realize that you had a screaming goat. Oh my gosh, he just broke his ear. Poor little guy, there's his little ear. Oh, he's a one-eared screaming goat. I didn't know you had a screaming goat too. I was gonna text you the other day and ask you if you had a screaming goat. I seen somebody in your comment section as I was creeping on your videos as I usually do. Hey, thanks for the ice cream fun, my guy. Uh, ABE is a screaming goat. What's he say? It started with him. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. That's uh, that's good to know. I didn't know the history of the screaming goat. <laughs> but yeah, it's a screaming goat. And uh, uh, I got the book up here. You know, all about screaming goats. It's a little dusty. <laughs> we can wipe it off. We can go through and read all about screaming goats if you want to. <laughs> so that's funny. Ah. 
But at any rate, that's all I had to... Uh, oh, Vecor has one too? Does he really? We might have a little special project going on with him. My guy Scott over there, possibly. That's all I'm going to say. At some point, you guys might know. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I had to tell you guys about. That was it. We got deep. We got personal. Figured if I was vulnerable at the dentist, I've been vulnerable with you guys. Uh, do Challengers Lift pick up a diesel crew cab without the fear, without fear of it falling off? Looking to get another lift in my shop. I guess if I was working on diesel crew cabs or bigger three quarter ton, one ton trucks, I probably, I mean, obviously it's a 10,000 pound lift, but I would be looking into something a little bit bigger, perhaps like a 14 or 15,000 pound extra high lift, 14 footer, you know, something like that. I guess it's all dependent on your ceilings, but these are all ALI certified. So I think to get that certification, which is done right here in the PRNY, whoop, whoop, right up here in, uh, I think up near Ithaca somewhere is where they do that certification. I think to get that or to obtain that certification, I think the lifts have to do a one and a half time the rate of capacity, something like that. I could be wrong. I've got a 15,000 pound lift over there, our drive on lift. And that's, you know, if we have big trucks, that's where we put them. So, anyhow, um, my guy James, I think I answered that question, right? Yeah, my guy James, and, and of course these these lifts here, these Versametrics, 10,000 pounders, you know, I'm sure Challenger makes a bunch of other lifts, so they might have something to suit your needs a little better than these. Um, Lidocaine, not Novocaine, I know, but we all call it Novocaine. Even when you go for a local anesthetic at the doctor's, they're like, we're gonna give you a little shot of Novocaine. Well, it's because we know what Novocaine is. It's like the crescent wrench, the channel locks. Well, they're not crescent wrenches and channel locks, but that's what we call it. So settle down, dude. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, my guy, James, he writes uh, that he's been watching your channel. I've gone from being afraid to working on cars to actually quite good at diagnostics. Rule number one, don't load the parts can and do it right or don't bother. That's right, James, fist bump. Boom. Get after it, boy. I mean, that's what I say. Um, let's see. Where are we at here? Is Josh the only guy or do I have other mechanics? Josh is my guy. He's my main man. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, I had another guy. Well, we had uh, SMA's most eligible bachelor, Jay, but he up and quit. Uh, so he doesn't work here anymore. Um, so, yeah, I used to have a couple guys. But now we're just down, just me and Josh, the OG crew. Um, I try to take care of him and pay him well and keep him fat and happy so he doesn't leave. <laughs> so that's it. I guess I don't have anything else to say to you. Uh, let's see. Keith says that he's got two channel lock brand crescent wrenches and crescent brand channel locks. Wow, you're going to, that's like going to interrupt the space time continuum. <laughs> what about vice grips you know i mean that's, vice grips is another thing that's very similar to novocaine just these generic titles that we give stuff right um what brand oil do i use in my personal truck well i use the same oil that everybody uses that watches project farm depends on ultra platinum baby oh thanks lewis mr peak appreciate that there um, yeah, it's like a brush hog. I've got a brush hog for my tractor. It's not brush hog brand, but I call it brush hog. You know, there, there's hundreds of examples that we could use. Uh, what oil filter do I use on my Tundra? I use the OEM Toyota filter. I get those. Why? Well, because they're super cheap. They're cheaper than any aftermarket oil filter you can buy, at least from my dealer. I think I pay about $3 and some change for an OEM Toyota oil filter. <laughs> and it comes with a crush washer for the drain plug, so... Um, yeah, too bad they didn't quit making Rotella. Now, I run Rotella T in all my equipment at home, so. Ford F-150 IWE systems suck. Uh, hashtag truth. <laughs> I just made a remark about that the other day. I had an early 90s uh, Toyota up in this joint. Toyota, early 90s Ford Ranger that had automatic hubs on it, and I just kind of laughed as I reminisced the fact that here we are, 30 years later and Ford still can't make a locking hub that works. <laughs> um, to add to my 
to the question about your boy Josh, just curious, does he have a two-post lift to use, or is he stuck on the rack? Or does our boy do diags, or do you take care of most of those? A couple questions in there. Um, I'll answer those here. Briefly, I thought I'd seen something else. I just didn't want to miss it. Best way to, to get people to know you have a channel. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, he's doing some shameless promotion. Junkers for clunkers. You guys are going to have to check him out now. <laughs> Shamelessly promoting himself. But at any rate, uh, so my boy Josh works on the alignment rack. And he works on it all day long. And, um, and he enjoys it. I have two lifts over here, which I've offered it. You know, like, dude, you're more than welcome to use this. You don't have to work on that rack because you put on like 75 miles walking around that thing every day. But that's where he works. That's what he likes. And he has options. He can work on any lift he wants, but he, he likes to do work over there. And, you know, more power to you, man. Not a big fan of it. Um, but he does a lot of the service work. He doesn't do any of the uh, diagnostics or very little of it. You know, he'll do like some ABS stuff and uh, some, some EVAP stuff when it's in over there. But he does a lot of service work, steering, suspension, uh, you know, tires. He, he stays busy. Missile keeps us, you know, pretty booked all day long, every day. So, yeah, he likes to, he likes to work over there. So, anyhow, whatever. <laughs> uh let's see yeah it's quieter over there yeah i don't know if he likes because quite yeah i think he just likes his own space <laughs> the spicy italian there's a guy who's been around for a while if he remembers the spicy italian uh let's see uh do we advertise no greg we do not advertise uh haven't advertised ever opened in 2005 and have never advertised occasionally we'll do if they're doing like a fundraiser for like the little league or the school yearbook where you can put a little ad in there and the money supports the kids you know we'll, excuse me we'll do that so i guess that's kind of advertisement but i don't go out you know radio or newspapers stuff like that so where did i meet mrs o oh it's ron burgundy <laughs> you stay classy san diego <laughs> i wonder if that's the real ron burgundy uh that's a that's a long that's a really long story, Ron. Um, <laughs> that's a really long story. I'll make it short in, in school, back in high school. So it's a little more in-depth and involved than I can say on YouTube without Mrs. O's permission. But uh, yeah, in school, we'll say. What, what oil filter tool do I use on Toyotas? Uh, I think Mac. I think it's probably Mac Tools. Let's see, I got a couple of them here. Yeah, here's another one. Here's my Mac Tools four cylinder Toyota wrench. And then on the other six and eight cylinders, I got, well, this is in a newer package because my guy Josh has broke a couple of these things. I don't, I don't know how, but he broke his and he kind of broke mine. I don't know if he's over there using a Ugga Dugga gun or what? But yeah, both of these are Mac, which Mac doesn't make their own tools, so I don't I don't know who makes them. But anyhow, these are the couple of Toyota ones that I use. Good question. They happen to be right here. <laughs> oh, well, anyhow. Let's see, where are we at? Kind of flicking by here. Yeah, we already talked about the deer. We got a bunch of deer. Um, we'll just have to start over in the chat. Uh, let's see. I gotta look down here because it's too it's too wiggly on my phone. Um, let's see, Vinny. Yeah, Vinny. Yeah, Vinny's still going, so he's down here at the home. I don't know the proper name for it. We always just call it down at the old folks home, I guess. But yeah, he's down there, and I think he got in trouble on his scooter. The people in the town get all pissed off because he just drives right down in the middle of the road. He's gonna get smoked one of these days. And, uh, yeah, so they, uh, I think the cops come to visit him and told me he can't ride his scooter down the road anymore or something like that. I was talking to the one lady that works there. He got in trouble for something. Trouble, I think he got in trouble for riding his scooter down the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got sidewalks, but then he crosses the road, and the problem is if it dies on him, you know, he can't walk, so... I don't know. There, there's something there. I didn't get too involved with it, you know. 
Yep. Uh, let's see, where is it? Can I visit? it? Can you let's see? Oh, there you go, Harry. Thanks, buddy. Glad to help you out. <laughs> oh, it has to be registered in Aus in Australia. No kidding. Yeah, I see. You know, like you'll see some old people cruising. There's a couple. There's like three or four old people that rip them down the road around here. You know, so I don't know. I don't know what the what the real story is, but. Yeah, like I say, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I, I'm just spreading the rumor that I heard, but, um, but yeah, because there, there's, there's one, two, there's three other people that rip them downtown that I know of, and I, I never seen anybody harass them, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, and now I'm requesting a YouTube special, a day in the life of SMA from Josh's perspective. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I don't know if he's gonna like me following around with a camera all the day. Um, Lewis has a uh, OBD, OBD scanner app and constantly find that the long-term field trim on bank two of some GM engine is higher than bank one, 3.5 on bank one, 7.5 on bank two. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be normal to have, have uh, you know, it's a, it's a V configuration engine. You've got two different sets of injectors, two different oxygen sensors detecting it. But yeah, if I seen the long-term field trim bank to bank was a little bit different i wouldn't get i wouldn't get too excited about it um so i'll take for example like here we got a 2015 chevrolet out there right now let me just see something here just want to make sure i didn't miss anything here before i tell you a story uh what are my thoughts on oils with additives you had to settle in the bottle oh dude i i'm not the guy for that you want to go to bob's duo guy and just get all mind screwed in that forum there and they'll tell you all about oils and additives and when you should change it and how you're an idiot and everything so i don't know zippy zap about that additive packages and how they suspend in the oil and i would probably get it from the horse's mouth i would call the oil manufacturer and ask them their thoughts on that but i i have no idea if you don't know shake the bottle can't hurt right <laughs> it gets all shook up when you dump it inside the engine <laughs> um and my guy map writes you have been a source of information and inspiration for several years i cannot thank you enough you have helped you have Helpful, helpful in countless mechanical and electrical problems. Positive vibes from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Shout out to Calgary. Woo -woo. Thanks, Matt. But to get back to the split bank, I was going to give you guys an example of the 2014 or 2015 Chevrolet we got out there. It's a half ton. It's got the big 5.3. It's the GDI, and it's got a 172-175 code in it, I think. 172-175, that's rich both banks, right? Bring it in, check it out. It's the used car guy special. It's got the shine all over it. It's been cleaned and ready for sale, but the money light's on. Check it out. Fuel trims are split bank to bank. I'm, uh, I don't know, I'll probably do a video on it. I'm gonna give a spoiler now, but I checked it out and I see I had a GDS plugged into and bank one or bank two, there's about seven or 8% difference and discrepancy from bank to bank, but they're both running rich and they're running rich because the fuel pump is bad. High pressure fuel pumps, PPing down in the crankcase. It pulls out of the crankcase and dumps it in behind the throttle body. But for some reason, it is richer on one bank than it is on the other. Even though you would think where the PCV hooks in on that, um, you would think that it would distribute it evenly throughout the cylinders. But it doesn't. And I know there's no other fault other than the high pressure fuel pump because when you unplug the PCV from the intake and you plug it off and let it just, you know, sit out here in outer space, the fuel trims go to almost zero where there's only one or two degrees, 2% difference bank to bank. But sitting there sucking fuel out of the crankcase, it does make it a little different. If I was less than 10%, I wouldn't even look back. And if I wasn't setting fuel trim codes, I wouldn't even care. So there's going to be a certain amount of correction all the way around on, on bank to banks. So thanks, Joe. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keith just reminded me of a story about a Ford that I had in that was blowing smoke and so rich you couldn't even start it hardly. And that had low fuel pressure. And the way it corrects the fuel trim on it is mind boggling. And it just pours the coal to it even though it essentially had a failing fuel pump. It's not, it's, I should have done a video on that, but it was just, it was so ridiculous, I just couldn't believe it until I fixed it, and then it's fixed and everybody's cool. <laughs> so.
So, oh, if somebody, hey, if somebody texted me, oh, no, nope, just got game cameras going off. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> David K, he LOL'd at my Mihoff restaurant <laughs> reference when we were talking about rust jacking and old Mr. Mihoff. It got behind there. <laughs> yeah, it's because it was flex fuel. That's right, Keith, you have a better memory than I do because it, cal it was calculating flex fuel and it changes the alcohol counter. That's correct. You are right, Keith. Man, I wish I had your memory. You're a smart fella. I fix a car and I'm like, boop, purge, psh, erase. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And man, Keith, man, how do you remember every story I tell you? Then he reminds me about the one uh, engine swapped injectors on a 5.3 and how that frigs up the fuel trims. But that was only only at deacceleration or only at idle. I can't remember what. But it was really, it was a really frigged up scenario with a difference in bank to bank and, and like number five and number seven injectors were swapped around. So just really bizarre stuff. Um, but at any rate, you're, uh, you're welcome for the Mihoff re reference. <laughs> I'll try to use it more often. And I can't tell you a story about your Uncle Jack. And if you had an uncle named Jack and he was stuck on the roof, would you help your, well, I won't even finish that one. Um, Eric O, when you test drive a vehicle, somebody was to hit you, do you have insurance or you not liable because the customers insured love the channel? No, Benjamin, this is the People's Republic of New York. I got more insurance than what 20 people need. I've got liability insurance, garage keepers insurance, content insurance, building insurance, insurance for my customers' cars, insurance for my customers' cars when they're inside. I pay more in freaking insurance than most people make in a year. So yeah, I guess the short answer now that you got me raging on the inside is yes, I've got insurance. And a lot of it. So, thanks for pissing me off. <laughs> you didn't piss me off. That's a good question, Benjamin, that, that some people might be curious about. So, thank you for asking that. But, yes, we pay a tremendous amount of money of insurance. Um, but, anyhow, the Piston Shack gives us greetings from British Columbia, Canada. Shout out to the Brits in Columbia, Canada. And uh, he watches the channel almost every day. Wow. Anyhow, thanks for watching. And our guy, BRMCC01, can I bring my workman in for just some maintenance? I know you said no viewers for customers, though. I don't have a problem currently. With fear of sounding disrespectful, I will respectfully say no. I'm sorry, but I don't do work for out-of-town YouTubers when they come in. This is a difficult thing to explain. And I've tried my best to explain it on multiple videos and in many occasions on live streams why I don't. Although I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, but I will just generalize when I say that typically it doesn't work. Logistically, it doesn't work uh, for, for lots of reasons. And I'll give a couple of examples. Take for example, like you come in, you drive hours and hours and hours and you bring your car and it has this intermittent problem of, you know, fill in the blank, intermittent problem. And you get here and you've driven for many, many hours and you get here with the car. And as hard as we try, we cannot duplicate the symptom. Now, what do I do? I'm kind of painted in a corner. You drove hours. I feel guilty. Like, oh, this guy drove hours, even though it's not my problem because it wasn't my decision for you to drive multiple hours. I can't duplicate the problem. You take the car, you try to duplicate it, doesn't duplicate it, boom, entire day's wasted. I wasted my time, you wasted your time, doesn't work. That's one example. Number two example would be, you drive your car here, you're here, you drop it off, you say, hey, I'm gonna hang out at the no-tell motel, and uh, you're down there, you're hanging out, I bring in the car, say, let's say for example, you just brought it in for simple brakes. You know, it's brake problem poles. I bring it in, I check it out, say, hey, you need pad rotors, it's right front caliper, you got a bad wheel bearing, whatever. You say, okay, get her done. I call down to the parts store, and due to COVID-19, unprecedented circumstances, supply chain issues, blah, 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 fill in the bank with piss poor excuse, we can't get the parts because they're on national back order, and so on and so forth. The car's here, you've driven hours and hours and hours to get here, and now I can't get the parts because we're in Podunk, New York, and Everything's on back order. You're at a motel. You stayed overnight. The car's tore apart. Everything's broke. What do you do? Um, you know, that's just, that's just how it is. 
and and I can't change that situation. The the problem with it is is that you drove hours and hours and hours, and you know here we are, here we sit. Now I look like the a hole because I can't fix the car. Hypothetical situation number three. <laughs> this will be the third and final one. You come in, you're happy, you drove hours, you're here, you're at the no-tell motel, you fight off all the lot lizards, you get your car fixed. I did whatever I had to do to it. You know, say it's a Subaru, I did a head gasket. You're super excited, like, yeah, I'm super excited. You fix my head gasket, you're driving home. Three months later, uh oh, I'm, I'm using coolant, or there's, you know, I smell oil, there's something going on. Well, with a, you know, part, let's say the timing belt and water pump I put on it, let's say the water pump's defective, it's weeping out of the pee hole. Well, now we have a warranty issue. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of lizards around here, Smitty, trust me, buddy. <laughs> trust me when I tell you we got two truck stops, dude, and they're littered with them. But now it's leaking out of the weep hole. What do you do? It's, you know, and now it's a warranty issue. You don't want to go into another shop and eat a, you know, a three and a half hour job to do a water pump on a Subaru. Plus you already paid me to do it. Plus you already paid for the part. Yeah, I'm a Napa Auto Care Center and we have a, you know, nationwide warranty, uh, but it's an inconvenience. So that is why I generalize all of that into one little box and say, I'm sorry, I just don't work for YouTubers. And I don't mean to take all my YouTubers and group them into a box because they all don't fit in the same box. Like all mechanics don't fit in the same box. But you guys get what I'm saying. At least Gary Buffington does, because he says, I got it. And I am sure that he does. If somebody is from out of town and they break down, certainly I, I help them out as best I can. And if a YouTuber was driving by and happened to break down, yeah, I would help them out the best I could. And yes, not even an oil change. And I know that might sound ridiculous, but I'm hoping that I'm being wise beyond my years and, and, just, saying, and just saying that. So... That's a long-winded way to say no respectfully and give my answer. <laughs> uh, but yes, you're right. Parts availability is a joke. I wouldn't mind hanging out for a while, but let's say, for example, if I ended up there for weeks, the downtime away from running my business would be bad. Yes, exactly. And I'm glad that you see that and that you can accept that and that you don't think I'm an a-hole for saying that because some people get really pissed when I say it. But what I tell them, I said, give Rain Man Ray a call. Drive down to Florida, be warm. Let him take care of all your problems and go sit at the beach. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm just busting your balls, Ray, if you're listening. But if you don't mind, I do have your number. And whenever people call, I'll just give them your number. And they can go down and, and hang out with you. What do you think about that? I don't know if he's still listening. but <laughs> Uh <laughs> but anyhow that's that i don't know what else to say this guy wants a snap on truck tour number three pretty bad well here's the thing with that here's what i'll tell you about the snap on truck tour number three we got a new guy our new snap on guy and he's a cool dude um is Rain Man Ray still up in here? Did he did he accept my <laughs> I better not I better not get him going. You know why? Because I've got his number that I can give to people to call and he can work on their cars. But likewise, he has my number, which I'm certainly hoping that he would never give out to, to people. <laughs> right, Ray, buddy? My old pal. <laughs> uh at any rate, that's that's that. Uh but the snap on guy, longtime viewer from the Pittsburgh, shout out to the P Bergs. Uh, best repair shop. But thanks, Tom. Um, but new Snap-on guy, he's a pretty cool dude, and I think he would be inclined to having a camera up in his grill. He's a handsome man. That's why I tell him this all the time. I always ask him, hey, did you get a look at that Snap-on guy? No, I'm, I'm straighter than the pole that some, well, never mind. But at anyhow, I can recognize a handsome man when I see one. I'm not afraid to admit it, even as a man. But our snap-on guy's a pretty handsome man. He's a pretty burly-looking dude. Looks like a manly man. And uh, I think he was in the service. Looks like a Marine. And uh, doesn't look like anybody you'd want to mess with. Got some tattoos. Pretty tough guy. And, but he's pretty friendly and, and has a chair-like demeanor. So I think that he would enjoy having the snap-on tool truck tour number three. So 
you know, that was pretty long-winded to say I can ask him. <laughs> Junkers for Clunkers still out doing shameless promotion. Keep the awesome content. Kami, I'm sorry to plug my channel on your live. If it's if it was wrong, off me keep. It was wrong, off me keep. Uh, hope your channel's better than your grammar, Junkers for Clunkers. Not that my grammar's any good, but anyhow, I think it's kind of... Yeah, I just made... Yeah, I don't know why they hid your comment there, but yeah, I just... Oops, I didn't mean to hide your comment, dude. Uh, M-D-O-T guy, my bad. I clicked the wrong button, my guy. But uh, yeah, I was going to make a joke, but I sometimes got to stop myself from making naughty jokes. <laughs> um, what? Yeah, things things they get a little weird there for a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, uh, what happened to Scotty Kilmer? He's still on my board over there. He's my guy, Scotty. <laughs> um, oh, he got me a pair of them needle nose. Oh, you ding dongs! I was just gonna say you ding dongs haven't called, so we'll have to. Uh, oh, Mitchell Jacobs call. We'll have to uh, block him on the phone if you call. I'll get a ticket offline. Um, <laughs> yeah, weirder than a three dollar bill. Well, we have kind of another saying for that, <laughs> Keith. But I know what you're saying, and I know you know the other saying, but. Uh, uh, <laughs> you guys know. Yeah, doodly do. <laughs> um, I don't mean to be taking my eyes away from you. Yeah, Rain Man Ray loves the phone ringer. And I see a lot of you guys on the Rain Man Ray channel are kind of complaining about his uh, lack of doodly do's. He's got everything else there. He now has the wife unit, so I think that should substitute for the doodly do's. I'm sure he can probably add a fake phone in the background and give a few doodly doos and everybody will be right back at their place. <laughs> I thought about giving some doodly doos, but I always forget. I still have the, hey, it's that guy. You know, when somebody goes by and haunts, hey, it's that guy. <laughs> we always give you one of those uh, the best I can. Yeah, and he's got the brake clean. He's got the, boom, boom, you know, the brake clean. You guys know. Uh, oh, somebody needs block, they said. Elikai Mohammed needs blocked. You really have nothing better to do than copy and paste the same method over and over by saying it. Sorry, I, I I must be missing it. Sometimes I don't I don't look at stuff like that. Well, if I see it, we'll block it. Um, he just dubbed the sound from old videos. Let's see. I can I can turn Rain Man Ray into a uh, moderator. Boom. He's now got the blue wrench. Hopefully, if it works. I don't know what that gives him the ability to do, but he's got it. Oh, somebody just got put in timeout. Naughty, naughty. Uh, <laughs> how much is a blue wrench? One million dollars. First person to put a million dollars up in the chat, I'll give you a blue wrench, a real one. In real life, I'll, I'll mail it to you. Don't put a million dollars in there. Yeah, now you can kick out people. Smitty's got the power. And every time you do it, you gotta say that. I got the power. Just like that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it can't be tight if it's liquid. That's right. That doesn't count, house calls. Has to be a real one million dollars. Uh, yeah, it could be a cornwall wrench. It could be whatever wrench you want. For $1 million, I'll forge it myself. Um, <laughs> what else do we got here? Hey, yeah, Louis Peak, he's got his own wrench. It's not the same, my guy. What's wrong with the Subaru? Well, that's in an upcoming video. Uh, I'll give you a couple guesses, and it's not the head gasket, but it has to do with salt. So we'll see the first person to, first person to get it. It has to do with salt, and... Uh, Thanks, Hot Rod, my guy. Uh, let's see. This is super. Nope, not brake lines, not head gaskets, not wheel bearings. It has to deal with rust. You're getting closer. Wheel bearings, rust exhaust. Nope, nope. Background, nope, nope. Not electrical. Come on, my guy. Oh, there it is. We got a winner. Bing, bing, bing. Who's got it? It is Daniel Lorish from wherever he's from. He is the winner. Uh, let's see. Gosh, you guys were crazy on that. Uh, yeah, Daniel's the winner. Uh, he wins absolutely nothing uh, except bragging rights. <laughs> yes, the subframe is rotted and the control arms and the oil pan. So, wow, I have the wrench 
the Icon Gold Wrench. Oh, that's from the Harbor Freight, right? Um, what invoicing software do I use? Seems like everyone's automotive. We are Napa Auto Care Center, so we use the Napa Tracks program, which I don't think you have to be an auto care center to use Napa Tracks, but we use Napa Tracks. Uh, what's up, Wednesday? Been a while. However, hello from Long Island to PRNY, Michael Barkman. Shout out to him. And a shout out to Clint. Masquerade, I think. <laughs> but anyhow, um, yeah, no, Subaru, she's, she's rotted. It's going to be in a video called Project Subaru, at least I think. Unless it pisses me off, then I won't have a video. Um, because I don't know, we got We got to put a subframe in it, and the exhaust is looking nasty, and pretty much everything else on it's looking nasty. The car itself, body wise, looks great. The bolts look like they're going to come out. How thick are my concrete for? It's about that thick, I imagine. Um, how do I feel about other tools other than Snap On? I find other tool brands are just as good and sometimes better than Snap On. And, and you hate iPhones. Well, I'll tell you that, you're correct. I am not a brand whore of any sort, of except in certain areas. I like Snap-on ratchets. Um, I like other Snap-on tools, but I'm not. I'm not on there like going all willy-nilly, getting the tattoo on the guns and doing all that. Saying if you don't have Snap-on, you suck. You got to wear the Snap-on coat and everything. I have. A plethora of tools of various brands, everything from Mac to Snap On to Napa, Nap On, Napa to Nipex and Astro. And I mean, I can't even name all the brands I have. Uh, a, a tremendous amount of brands. So, yeah, don't get too, don't get hung up on, on the Snap On train or the Mac train or the Cornwell train. They're just convenient because they come to your shop, but they cost way more than a lot of other tools. Um, is it true that northern car engines are generally in better shape compared to the same age southern car engines? I wouldn't know that, Jeff. I, I rarely see southern cars, and I wouldn't know really the difference. Perhaps our salvage engines, maybe our salvage engines are better simply because our cars rot in half quicker and are lower mileage, but oftentimes if it's a cast iron block, and uh you know our even our blocks rot in half so i i wouldn't think i would i would rather have a lower mileage southern car than a, a low mileage northern car engine like if i was going for just the engine from a salvage yard simply because like i say our engine blocks rot i mean you can you bring in a three valve four that needs you know phasers and everything every freaking bolt in the valve cover is rotted you got to take a whole saw and go around it and or sometimes just air hammer the valve cover off i mean you can't even do simple repairs on just the engine so i would say probably not but i could be wrong um how do you decide what you're going to video for the channel that's what greg asked me my guy greg spurt of the moment seat of the pants it's a feeling you get it's in your gut and it's also dictated by time how much time i have like this car's a drop off for a few days and uh how busy i am so i only film about one out of every 15 or 20 cars we work on maybe and sometimes i don't film stuff for weeks because i just get too far behind and i just like right now i've got four videos uploaded sitting in my queue and that's like my buffer keeps me happy but uh, when my buffer runs out then things get frustrating guys like rain man ray they're just cranking them out every single day they are animals animals but you know um the dodge prince 899er he writes hey eric i have an 04 ram hemi and i have a check engine light for egr valve volts too high can you shed a little light on what to check first i thank you ps i'm on my 30 gr valve from napa well, Dodge Prince, what I would do, I see that quite often. And if you're going to unload the parts cannon on it, I would unload it with an OEM EGR valve, particularly on a Chrysler. If your light comes on after that, call me. Don't call me. Seriously. Uh, high voltage, you could be missing a ground, causing the voltage to stay high. Or likely, you have a junk SMP, not a sponsor, EGR valve. Okay. Um, <laughs> 
that's what I would say. If you're using NAF EGR valves, it's probably junk, particularly if you put it on and it's you know good for a little while. I've had pretty terrible luck with uh, standard motor products EGR valves and you know NAPA ones, and I, I assume they're all from NAPA. You know, SMP makes stuff for NAPA. Not trying to bash their stuff directly. It's just sometimes their EGR valves on GMs and Chryslers they suck and they don't work correctly. So go OEM, see if and take two pills. Call me in the morning. Uh, what was my final thought on the half inch Harbor Freight earthquake? Oh, it was a fantastic tool for the money. Um, it's a, it was a great tool for the money. That's my, uh, no, Keith, I don't think, don't, 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 don't throw me under the bus, my guy. I'm just saying, you know it, I know it, we all know it, but we don't like this. I shouldn't even say that kind of stuff out loud. Thanks for giving me a check there, Keith. I shouldn't say that stuff out loud. Um, because when I throw a stone into a pond, when other people throw a stone in, I was told this by a guy, when some people throw a stone into a pond, they get a small ripple. Well, when I throw a stone into a pond, it's like throwing a school bus into a pond. You get a big ripple. And I'm not trying to make a ripple and throw stones at them. I'm just saying some aftermarket parts suck. And it doesn't, you know, I can say it's a Dorman, it's a Standard, it's a Napa, it's a CR, it's whoever makes it. And it's just... That's just how it is, man. I've been doing this long enough to know, like when it comes to certain parts, there are certain brands you don't buy because you don't want to come back. And I don't care how cheap it is. Some stuff, you just go OEM. Got it? Um, you should get a Harbor Freight coupon that I emailed you. You should have two for you and the lady. Get yourself a new squeaky stool or your own golden ratchet. Hey, thanks, Trey. I did get the email, but the one I got has Mrs. O's name on it. And Trey, it's, it's playing mind games with me because I've been up on the, the Harbor Freight website and I don't know what to get, but 25% off is a pretty good deal. But I don't really need anything, and I don't want to just senselessly buy something. Um, so anyhow, I appreciate it, Trey, and I only got to like the 15th to use it, and every night I've been on Harbor Freight. Yes, I could get a foot of your camera, thank you. Um, I've been on the Harbor Freight website, and I just can't figure out what I want for the 25% off. So... But thank you, though. Yes, I do appreciate it. And uh, everything is junk when it doesn't work. That's right. Um, yeah, everything is junk when it doesn't work. That is 100% true. Even Toyotas, not really. We still love those. Um, <laughs> I thought about some of the jack stands because my guy Josh is, uses jack stands sometimes on the um, alignment rack. And sometimes it's necessary, you know, we have a car jacked up, he has it jacked up on the frame, and, you know, he needs to load the suspension, the wheels off it. So we'll put some jack stands out on the, the, the turntables. And I've seen they make jack stands with round bases. And they they would be nice sitting on the turntables, I thought. So I thought about getting some of them. Um, but I don't know. But I don't know. I used to live next to an old guy. His name was Barry. I think he's still alive. I lived by him when me and Mrs. O first got married, and he lived in a trailer up in the town of Howard. And this guy lived next to me, and that's what he was this miserable old man, and that's what he always said. I don't know. I don't know. He'd just walk, he'd always just pissing and moaning about something. And that's how he ended every sentence with, but I don't know. So every once in a while, I'll say that to Mrs. O. And <laughs> when I'm freaking out, I'm like, what? <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Yeah, one million dollars. You tricked me, my guy. I'm like, mother lover. I'm like, that ain't for real because you're getting that back. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Good joke, dude. Um, but uh, yeah, old Barry. I won't give you his last name, but he used to walk around. He always said that. So I do that to Miss Doe once in a while. She asked me something. I say, like, hey, I don't know. And she knows what I'm talking about. Ah. Well, um, Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Smitty. Don't they always? You're like, whoa. <laughs> it's B.W. Renchy from way up north in the frozen north. Uh, is ASE certification worth getting started in the field? I guess it depends on where you work, Josh. Uh, for myself, it, it, it isn't. For some other people in um, different uh, shops, it is because it can dictate how much they get paid. Uh, you could use it for some self-validation if you if you need that you know let yourself know that you're doing good or maybe it inspires you to um 
you know, to be a better mechanic. I would rather see somebody go get some training from, uh, you know, some independent aftermarket training or training at their dealership rather than concentrate on just passing a silly test to get a patch. Personally, because I think training will pay off better than just, you know, reading a book, studying and, you know, passing a test. All right, see you later, Ray. Keep your stick on the ice. I think that's what he says. Um, some employers require uh, require ASE, so um, I can't uh, I can't really speak on the matter. Um, see, like for example, like here, like Keith just wrote L1 Automate Diagnostics. It's a requirement to work for me, also in our name. That is the only certification that where to go. Uh, that's defendable in court. So, see, for example, I couldn't even go work for Keith. He wouldn't even hire me. Maybe I could sweep his floors, but he wouldn't hire me because I don't have, I'm not ASC certified. I'm not real good at tests or reading or arithmetic. Sorry, Keith, I was going to come put in the application, but being that you just literally shot me down in front of all my friends, I guess I won't. You can keep the blue wrench. Uh, my starter is located in a very difficult location on my car. Any suggestion on how to get starter fluid in it? I would probably go to an express loop, Michael. I would probably take my can of starting fluid with me and just ask if um, ask if they can install it for you. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's it's a difficult thing to say how if your starter is hard to get to and you're trying to fill it with starter fluid. I would take it to a professional and like I say, take in at least one can, unless it's a V8, which they usually take a can and a half. So yeah, I guess it depends on what you have. Uh, let's see, what did Keith tell me? He says, everyone gets a year to achieve it. Oh, wow. So I still could work for him. All right, I guess we're still friends. We can still be friends. Uh, yeah, break, I use brake clean for starter fluid too, but he wants to fill a starter with starting fluid, so. It's good for 100,000 miles. I don't know. I don't think I'd push my starter fluid to 100,000 miles. Um, well, you know, I don't believe that ASC is a total joke. Somebody put that there. I, I just, I think it may not be for everyone. Uh, you, you know, like I say, I think it depends on where you work, what your goals are. Some people need it to stay motivated to stay, you know, like, all right, I want to step on, I'm going to do some, I want to do some training and, um, you know, I want to be able to pass my ASCs. It may be a personal achievement, a personal goal, and they have to do some, you know, some studying and it may inspire some other thoughts for them. Like, gosh, you know, here's this question on this ASC test. I never really thought about it. Um, you know, so perhaps they can, you know, it, it kind of motivates them. It could be self-motivating for some people, perhaps. That's just that's just my thoughts on it. Um, this is Tizzle wants to know if you have checked out our channel. I have seen it, yes. Um, no, I've been on there. I've checked it out. I remember both of you folks, and uh, because you gave me a husky magnet, and I still have it on my refrigerator. Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> um, oh, Frank DeLucy, he he's got a 2012 Jeep Patriot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, sport, uh, can a bad ground wire affect both VVT solenoids for a slow response time or replace both and still have the codes for both comes back? Both have ground using the multimeter. Uh, well, I don't know, Frank. I don't know which code you're getting or what code you're getting. Uh, the fastest way to tell on those... Uh, I guess I'd have to look at a diagram. Are they full-time grounded and power side switched or do they have power there and they're ground side switched? That's what I would think. I would think that they have a uh, PSN gamer guide. Your car has a plug heater core then if you're only getting heat when you rev it up, more than likely. Uh, but I would think on those VVT solenoids that, um, that they would be full-time power ground side switch. So I'm not sure how you would be measuring the ground with a multimeter if that was the case. What you can do, if you want to know if it's receiving, it's if the circuit is intact to that, the easiest way to do it would be a current clamp. You can simply take your VVT solenoid, you can measure the resistance of it, you know how much voltage is being applied to them, and then therefore you can throw a current clamp on it and see if all the math adds up. 
that's that's what I would do if I wanted to know the circuit was intact. I hope that answers your question. Um, is it true that the red goes to positive and black goes to negative? Sometimes uh, in the winter, though, I heard if you switch them, stunt man, uh, the car will start faster. I don't, it may be a rumor. I don't know. Um, but I guess it heats up the battery quicker. So maybe perhaps try that in your next video. Stunt man, what's up, buddy? Don't hook your battery cables up like that. Uh, Desiree Hayden, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Desiree. Here's a payment for all the information, tips, tricks, humor, rants that you have provided me over the years. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's insanely generous. And uh, I'm glad that we could provide you with information, tips, tricks, humor, rants. All at the same time. Sometimes all at the same time. <laughs> oh, you already switched your vans to winter air? Gosh, it got cold here way quicker. We put winter air in our tires three months ago. Uh. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I, you guys are making fun of my 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 step stool. It's pretty creaky. It is not near as creaky as it is on the videos. Uh, oh man, I can't believe stuff man is in the house. Is it true that a no mercy reversi is good for a transmission? Yes. I mean, for crying out loud, watch neutral drop videos. There's some people that will come in and be like, oh, I was pulling into my driveway and I was going one mile an hour. And my wife accidentally put it in reverse. And I just laugh. I'm like, Stuntman holds that thing pedal to the plastic and he's forward, reverse, forward, reverse. And I'm just, I'm more impressed with that little transmission in that car than anything else that Stuntman does. Why this thing just doesn't scatter a bunch of part numbers in the bottom of the pan is beyond me. But it is absolutely impressive to me watching the Neutral Drop channel, just seeing what these cars will take. These are city driven cars. These things have had the balls beat off them their whole life. And then they get the no mercy or mercy. They get the rocking horses. They've got the chubby rubber on them. And it's just blows my mind with, with how much a car can actually take on a neutral drop channel or on yeah, neutral drop channel. Um, I had a Bay area 650 shouting out from the 650 in the Bay area. Uh, he's got a 2002 Chevrolet uh, Tahoe. The courtesy fuse keeps blowing. The moment you put one in, it's for the dome lights, door lights and stuff. Any ideas on how to fix this? What I would do, you the Bay Area guy, I would get a wiring diagram and I would see what all it runs. And then it's, it's difficult to tell you how to trace down a short on YouTube <laughs> or on, on a live stream. But that's what, what I would do first. I would get a wiring diagram. You can get them from GM. You can get GM service data. I believe $20 for, 30 day, for three days, and you have all the OEM service info, or you can get the, uh, like, Mitchell DIY, and, um, you know, I would get the wiring diagram to see everything that it fed, and then I would make my plan from there. I know that's a really generic answer, but that is exactly how I would do it. And then I would see at that point how I can dissect the circuit. What's the easiest way to split it down? Do I still blow a fuse at that point? And if there was multiple wires coming out of the fuse box, let's say you had a courtesy fuse and there's three brown wires coming out, I could throw a wire clamp on each of them to see which way the current was going. And then I would use my diagram again to dictate which direction I was going with my diagnosis. And that's about the best I could tell you. So. Um, the Tim Train 35, uh, with electric cars becoming more and more of a reality, how do you see an independent shop operating on, say, 10 years down the road? You might better just <laughs> ask me. That is probably the most debatable topic out there that I'm not going to get into, but I'll answer it the best I can from my perspective. How do I see it in 10 years? I say in 10 years, sayonara, sucker, because I ain't going to be here, hopefully, Lord willing. Uh, I won't be here, <laughs> but how do I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to affect it. I'm not going to poke the hornet's nest, so to speak, while I'm here. People, you want to get people pissed off, A, weld with a welder on YouTube, B, solder on YouTube, D, A, B, D, where did this guy go to school? C, what else can you do on YouTube? Reuse a cotter pin. Or D, talk about electric cars. E, talk about the pandemic. F, 
Tell them your political status. And G, if I'm correct on my alphabet, use a torque stick when you're putting on wheels. So you fell in that criteria of A through F of things not to do on YouTube. And that's one of them is talk about electric cars and how you think that the electric grid that we have currently won't support electric cars and that people will freak out. So how do I think it's gonna affect me? I don't think it's gonna affect me because I'm really hoping in 10 years that it's sayonara sucker for this guy. It'll either be retired or dead. Um, Dex Friday, where Hannah and Marie in life. Hannah is a nurse and has moved off and gotten married and has a family. Well, doesn't have a family, but has moved off and is probably working on a family. I don't know. She's married and moved off. And same thing with uh, Miss Marie. I don't believe she's married at this point, but has moved off and is working on her life. And I don't feel at liberty to tell you guys where they are or anything like that because some people are weirdos. Uh, let's see. Oh, Brion, or Brian, as they say, 2013 FJ Cruiser 91K lost two miles to the gallon after Phillips. Long term fuel trims minus eight, minus 10, mass airflow 0.2, air filter not clogged. Any thoughts? I'm sorry, Brian, but I don't have any thoughts on that. Um, I don't know anybody that monitors their fuel that close. I would just probably wait and check the average. I mean, cold weather's here. Um, I, I don't know where you live. I mean, there's so many stinking variables to fuel mileage loss. I mean, uh, you can have change. You know, did you get new tires? Are the tires properly inflated? Has the rolling resistance changed? The alignment, do you have a brake hanging up? Different types of fuel from winter to summer. I mean, there is a gazillion different things. Are you calculating fuel mileage based off the MPG button up on the dash? Or are you calculating it based on running the numbers at the pump? How many miles you're driven versus how many gallons you got? There's a lot of questions I would need answered there to even start to form an opinion in, in two miles a gallon. I, anyways, <laughs> the best I can do. Sometimes I can't answer questions, dude. Easy. Even EVs will still need tires, alignments, brakes, AC service. That's true. Um, I do believe that's the answer. Thank you, David H., before I forget, my guy. Um, yeah, they're still going to need repairs. I mean, this is New York. They're still going to rot out. Wires are going to get corroded. They're still going to be pieces of crap. It's just they're going to be pieces of crap with an electric motor instead of pieces of crap with a gas engine. Cars are still junk. They still drive down the road, they still have wheel bearings, and they're still going to have problems. Oh, is my sniffer back? Oh, Captain Bugger Nuts, I wish it was. Am I going to replace my squeaky platform? Maybe, Frank. But for right now, I'm still going to use it to make people upset. Mrs. O says I'm spiteful. I think it's funny. Um, let's see. We work on... Uh, we work on Model S Teslas that have rusted control arms here in the south. Yeah, what's that tell you? This guy, my guy Keith, he's down in the south where things are not rusty and the Teslas rust out there. So let me tell you what, you bring one here to the PRNY, I think it's going to disappear. It'll be like, that's how you get off your lift. <laughs> Dust, baby. <laughs> um, at any rate, uh, this fella here said he's got a 0659 Cummins in Texas. No rust, 160 thousand miles people are getting stupid money down here for them i've been offered 30k for it sell it or keep it i tell you what what i would do with it is i would bring it up north and then get 60k for it because you think people down there are paying stupid money take one of them pre-emissions cummins bring it up here to the prny and try to sell it you are going to get anything you ask for you get 60 grand plus their firstborn child if you want one <laughs> yeah those uh same thing with pre-emissions tractors if you can bring up some you know 150 horse to 300 horse pre-emissions tractors you can name your price on those uh farmers go bananas for those so anyhow fellow was asking about my sniffer after rona got the rona january 20th in the year 2021 if i remember correctly uh thanks more fab industries and uh you know i got the rona me and mrs o were sick for a couple of days but afterwards getting healed up i lost my sniffers taste and smell lost it for several months got it back so i thought there's a couple things that uh 
they haven't come back correctly. And I'll tell you what they are in a minute. I'll let you guess. Uh, when you answer somebody's questions with all the steps variables they need to figure it out, that is answering their question. Yeah, well, I mean, that's I try to do the best I can. I don't know if you're uh, throwing stones at me or just saying, like, yeah, you do the best you could and try to answer with all the variables. There are tons of variables. That's one of the words I can't say. When you're answering somebody's question, the best of your ability. And sometimes when there's a bazillion things coming across the screen, they can't... Uh, they can't reply to the point that I could see it. We could spend all day, you know, back and forth asking questions, but I try to answer them the best I can with the information that I have in the question that was given. Hope that sounds, that sounds like a cop out. <laughs> um, love your channel. Is your opinion crown or fluid film better for undercoating? Ooh, ooh, I like them both. I use fluid film because it seems to be less aggressive on the rubber components. It has seemingly less petroleum in it, perhaps. Fluid film over the years will eventually get to the jiggly bits under the car. The plastic and the fender liners and the, you know, door seals, but it takes a long time. Years, typically. I see that the crown, you get the crown on the, on the door seal, that baby's gone in like two weeks, so... They both do an excellent job in doing what they're asked to do, doing what they're advertised to do. They both do an excellent job in protecting against rust. Back to, so yes, the answer to that is yes. If you have a choice of either, I'm going to use crown or fluid film or nothing, I'm not going to use crown because I love fluid film. No, dude, pick one, use one, because it's way better than rust, let me tell you, my guy. Um, do I refuse all Euro cars, Volkswagen, Audi, BMW? If so, why? Yes, I do. Um, and that usually, that equates to me refusing about two cars per year. Nobody in our small farming community drives Euro cars simply because we don't have dealer close by. And I don't, I'm not going to sound rude, but I'll just say that most people around here don't have Euro cars. We don't drive BMWs, Porsche, Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen. They're just they're just not here. So do I refuse to work on them? Yes. I'm not equipped, tool, or knowledgeable to work on them. So instead of making myself look foolish, wasting my customers' time and money, it's just as simple to say, you know, negative Ghost Rider. I don't work on those. But that's it. Okay, to gradually change winter, summer air as needed. Yes, you can you can exchange summer and winter air at any point. I don't I don't I use a 78% nitrogen mix when I do it though. Summer and winter, I try to stick with that 78 75 25 blend, maybe 1% other gases, something like that when you do it. I mean that's that's pretty critical, but yeah, you can swap out winter summer anytime you want. Um MN DIY your channel. Woo -woo, Greg Walker in the house. There he is. Give a shout out. <laughs> James, uh, he writes, he's got an 02 Dodge Ram van. 1500 with a big 318. Lost an overflow tank full of coolant in the last week. Lost an overflow tank full of coolant last week or so with no visible signs of leaking, assuming head gasket. But how would you confirm? I'd go on the self main auto channel and I'd go in the little search box and type in how to test for a blown head gasket. And you'll bring up multiple ways, everything testing it from a Pico scope to an endoscope to a simple gas tester. If it is pushing coolant into the overflow tank, you are right to assume that you may have a bad uh, head gasket or a bad radiator cap where the negative side of the cap is, has gone bad, which is possible, but more than likely you got a blown head gasket. So you can go down to the napper. They don't sponsor you. But you can get some combustion leak test fluid, and you can get the turkey baster to go with it. And you can see if it goes from blue to yellow. If it goes blue to yellow, it's all she wrote. It's all, it's all over but the crying. So that's probably what I would do. Um, that's the easiest test to do. You do it right at the radiator cap, and you're checking for combustion gas in the um, radiator. Some CO, I guess it would be. Um, uh, the VP, 
gives me five yens. I don't know what they are. <laughs> uh, he's fighting a PO 134 on his Mazda CX-7. Change O2 sensor. Check the wires. Light's still on. Any ideas? No, sir. I, I PO 134. I know it's an O2 sensor code, but uh, P0134. What's Google say it is? Uh, circuit number active. Oh, no activity detected. Bank one, sensor one. So what I would do if it were me and if that's the true definition of that code, no activity or low voltage, I would want to know on my scan tool is my bank one sensor one. Oh, uh, MP81, man, don't don't be talking like that. Don't be saying that the car wizard sucks. We're not, you don't, don't do that. All right, we don't slander other YouTube channels on here, except Scotty. No, I'm just kidding, we don't slander Scotty. But I guess what I would do is, um, I would I would have a scan tool plugged in and I would see if the O2 sensor is functioning. Does the O2 sensor work? Or is it stuck low? If it's stuck low, is it really a circuit problem or is it stuck low because there's a pinhole next to it letting all the oxygen in? I don't know. Is my phone going dead? Oh, I don't think so. Um, that That's what I would do. And then I would go from there. And if it, you know, can I force it rich? Can I force it lean? Can I get it to respond? If not, then yeah, there certainly is a, a circuit issue. So that that's how I would handle that. Um, the bandit, or bandit, the, <laughs> he says he enjoys the show. He's glad he found a channel. I'll keep watching, buddy. He's had a message oh, from the bandit. Old Burt Reynolds himself. <laughs> uh, oh, Keelan's up in the house. Keelan Seven, thank you, buddy. And Neil Ryan, how does bar chain oil compare to fluid film on the jiggly bits? Uh, I have a customer that uses the classic bar chain oil toilet bowl wax ring melted slew that he sprays underneath his truck. Didn't I just put that video out in a Dodge Dakota? Well, that's what that guy used to use. And I noticed on that, it the bar and chain oil seems to work well. It's thick and sticky. <laughs> thick and sticky. Uh, sorry, I got sidetracked there. It works well as far as preventing the rust, but it really seems to raise hell with the rubber components under the car. So give it a choice if that's all I had. And uh, you were environmentally responsible. Should I say something like that? Some kind of disclaimer, like you check with local areas, state laws and everything like that. And that's all you had, that's what I would do because it's better than rust, dude. Anything is better than rust. If I had access to fluid film and access to barn chain oil, I'm probably going to use fluid film. So, anyways, uh, you know, corrosion free. It's some Canadian stuff. It works. New Hampshire oil coating, Crown, Rust Check. There's so many of them. Anything is better than rust. I think your petroleum products like waste oil, which we just we did that video on that Dodge truck that was here. That stuff stinks and it destroys freaking everything. Your boots on your steering rack get this big. All your control arm bar bushings fall out. You know, it's some bad stuff. Quit calling me, you dink. Um, yeah, we'll block this guy. Uh, anyhow, that's it. Uh, have I ever heard of rear amp causing popping through all the speakers? 13 megahertz unplugged rear amp harness works. Will work first drive, turn car off on speakers. Pop. Pop nost, is that a word? Pop. I gotta see how to pronounce that. Oh, no, it's not a word. Okay. If it is, it's German. Um, I, I don't really mess with amplifiers or cars or... Yeah, I'm, yeah I don't even mess with cars. I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know if an amplifier can do that. Oh, they pop nonstop. I see what you're saying. I don't know. I mean, I would check probably if I had something like that i would check the input to the amplifier is this an input that's being amplified it amplified amplified it <laughs> is it an input that's being amplified and then you're just getting the result of that um will work first drive turn car off and then back on the speakers pop non-stop i i don't know that's everybody in the here is saying it's a ground loop problem i don't i don't deal a lot with I don't know if this is aftermarket or not. But yeah, I can't say I've only ever fixed, but maybe one OEM radio in a car. I did a video on that. Um, there's a GMC Acadia had wrong software in it, stuff like that. But, but yeah, I don't, 
that's something I very rarely would see, I guess, in my shop. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even know how you would measure a 13 megahertz frequency unless you had a, a speaker set up in there and were plotting it. I, I don't know. You're you're a little little beyond me. <laughs> oh, 13 MKZ, like a Lincoln. <laughs> Look at this ding dong. I'm like, oh, this guy. Welcome to the blacklist, baby. Watch this. So you know, this guy's calling from Vancouver. And we go like this, and we open it up, and then we close it, and then we block them. It's really fun. I love doing it, people. All right, so we'll go like that. Look at that. Goodbye. <laughs> he thinks he's special. We'll leave it. We'll leave it like this, and then we'll just mute it. So, because he's calling from Vancouver, BC, so now it can crank up his uh, phone bill the whole time. So we'll just leave it muted like that. It's kind of fun. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oops, I'm, I'm missing some stuff here, fellas. Uh, buy your four paw kiddo some treats. Oh, yeah, we'll buy the four paws kiddo some treats. We always buy it. Oh, Luna, she almost got left outside today. Let me just go set. I got to do something here. Stand by. She goes outside right about quitting time. And then, um, uh, hey, it's Don. <laughs> What's up, Don? Uh, what brand are my quarter T handles? Nut drivers that I use all the time. Those are made by Top Tool, my guy. And those are great. These things are, as you say, if you will, the bomb. They're made by Top Tool. T O P T U L. Tango Oscar Papa Tango Uniform Lima. Top tool. Not a sponsor. Uh, they're a Taiwanese tool. I believe they're made in Taiwan. They make excellent tools. If they would come to the United States and sell on a top tool truck, it would bankrupt our other tool trucks. Uh, they are fantastic quality. I vouch for them. They make fantastic wrenches and sockets and everything they make is really great. I wish they sold them more in the US of A. I believe they're a European tool. And I'll tell you this, if you buy them, you're not, that doesn't even make sense. I was gonna say you're a peeing your money away, but that doesn't make sense because you wouldn't be. Uh, I have their sockets in quarter inch drive. I have their sockets in three inch drive. They have a beautiful finish on them. They hold up fantastic. They make a wonderful screwdriver. I would say their screwdrivers are comparable to Wera. And if you're not familiar, Wera are German made. I believe they're German, right? Wera makes probably one of the best screwdrivers in my opinion. And I'm entitled to my opinion because I'm entitled. So Wera makes fantastic screwdrivers in the Phillips and flat, excellent screwdrivers. And Top Tool makes the only screwdriver I would say that is comparable. Uh, Snap-on and Max don't even hold, uh, they're not even in the same category as where uh, when it comes to screwdrivers so that's you know that's my thoughts on that um uh oh freezing up down here um so that's my thoughts on that opinion on power stop brakes uh patrick we've already talked about that i give them my thumbs up at least the ones that i put on mrs o's van i hate giving a full review or a thumbs up based off of one experience but the experience that i've had with them has been a-okay I'm sure there's others that maybe disagree with that. Uh, I think you just bought them. Appreciate it. Fluid film says won't hurt plastics or synthetics rubbers. Is that true? It may be, but I can tell you on my truck, the plastic fender liners have since swole, but I've used Crown on it too, so that's not a good example. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I mean, you get it on door seals. I've done customers' cars with strictly fluid film, and yeah, I've seen it. You know, mess with door seals and stuff like that. But it takes a lot of years to eventually start to get to it. So I don't know. I don't know what they say versus what it really does. It does have some petroleum in it, so yeah, eventually it gets to it. Garrett Brad from Assured Auto in Hawaii. Oh man, is that what, that's the sign he gave me. <laughs> uh, Kenneth White up in the house in here. Um, 
What were we talking? Oh, this guy, uh, ride, uh, ride with Chris. As a mobile tech, I've considered purchasing an oscilloscope. Is this something you would recommend for electrical diag? Absolutely. If you're able to afford it and you know how to use it, or you, or you're gonna start using it, go for it. You don't hold back. Uh, oscilloscopes are fantastic tools, and there are some cases where it's the only tool. It is the most logical tool to use on the job. So yeah, if you're able to, absolutely, go for it, man. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Chris B, not Chris B the Archer, uh, just Chris B, single B, the letter B, has a 03 MR2 manual transmission. He's got an 807 clutch stroke sensor low voltage. It catches, it uses a hydraulic pump, no clutch per se. Thoughts on where to look? Dude, I wouldn't even know where to look. I would look in service data. <laughs> That's what I would do. And just as I mentioned to the fellow that has the uh, GM with a problem, I told him that he can go on GM and get service data for 20 bucks for three days. Same thing with you with your Toyota. I would go and get service data. I mean, that's the place I would look. I am not familiar with that whatsoever. I've never seen one of those cars, nor have I seen that code. But if it was a stroke sensor low voltage code, I would look to see what a what a stroke sensor is, what this code set criteria is, where the circuit goes, how it works, and then I would just diagnose it. And that's how I approach every single thing I've worked on. If you've watched any of our diag videos, it's the same mundane, just beat to death process over and over and over again. And that's that's how I would approach that. And that's that's the best that I can tell you. And that's how I would do it because that's how I do it every time. And it always, always, always. I said that three times, so it's important. Lead you to the answer. Service data, analytical, logical thought process. Follow the facts. Don't go on a wild goose chase and just follow the facts and boom, there's the answer. Get this baby out. Hit it when you're that done. That was easy. Just like that. Sometimes you got to guess, <laughs> but that's what I would do. Uh, let's see. He says... He bought the three-day Toyota TechStream subscription. Pretty much says, sucks to be you. <laughs> wow, Chris B, that I am surprised. Toyota has some pretty good service data when it's in their format because otherwise the hyperlinks and stuff that they use on other formats don't work. But I'm surprised that you think Toyota service data sucks. Not saying that you're wrong, but um, I mean, it's a stroke sensor i would think it's only three wires it seems like you should at least be able to get the wire diagram and figure it out from there uh would i recommend the Handtech 2d72 it's a scope digital multimeter and waveform generator in one dude i don't know i've never used a Handtech scope i've got all telescopes i got two of those and i've got a couple picos and i've got a u scope never used the Handtech. perhaps people in the uh comment box can fill you in on that out of the scopes i own the pico by far hands down is the best scope ever hardware software end user usability tech support i mean you can't you can't beat that they are expensive so yeah the hand tech one i i don't know um i've never never really fiddled with one so but perhaps people are going to fill in in the chat Hey, there's DIY Dave. I give that guy some thumbs ups or some hearts all the time. He's my heart guy. I don't even know him. <laughs> thanks for the great education. You're giving this humble DIYer. Oh, thanks for the great education you've given this humble DIYer. You're welcome, Dave. Merry Christmas to you, my guy. Ooh, are we allowed to say that? Of course you can. You can on my channel, fella. Say Merry Christmas all you want. I just think in real life you're not supposed to say that. Because people get offended. Whatever, dude. Now, let's see. Where are we at? I'm just checking my battery life because I don't want I don't know when the phone's gonna die. Great, now it's tipping over. Um let's see. He said Chris says that the Toyota service data is great, just not on his particular issue. That's I don't know, Chris. I think at that point, which I don't I don't disagree with you. Um just because <laughs> you see, Keith's still trying to figure out what a holiday tree is. Happy holidays. How about Merry Christmas, guy? That's what it is. It's Merry Christmas. Um, what I would do in that case, 
Chris, because I've seen service data that sometimes sucks. And that's just a fact of life. Some service data sucks. And that's just how it is. You know, go work on a Suzuki. Tell me what you find, right? Um, what did I have on a Suzuki the other day? They went, <laughs> anyways, I won't get sidetracked. But in that case, I would look and see, here's the sensor. Maybe they got code set criteria, but at least I would find, well, here's the sensor. Here's where it lives. Looking at the circuit diagram, here's how it works. You know, it's a three-wire sensor. It's a two-wire sensor. You know, I would just look at that, and then I would just test the circuit at the end module that it goes to, and then I would probably just go from there. That's what I recommend he has one. So this guy has the hand tech scope, and he recommends it. What's my preferred band of belts? 2010 Ram with a Delco pulley and belt kit. Green belt won't stop screaming like a banshee when it's wet. My favorite belt, Patrick, of all time in the aftermarket world would be a Bando, not a sponsor. They're usually made in the USA, and they're usually cheaper than Daco and Gates. Bando, B-A-N-D-O belts, not a sponsor. If I buy a belt for a customer, I usually always buy Bando. That being said, when I just put a belt on my own truck, I bought an OEM belt because it's a Tundra. It's a mother lover to change the belt on. And I had a hundred and whatever thousand miles on it. And uh, I wanted to put an OEM belt on it. Why? Because I tried an aftermarket belt on a customer's Tundra once and I ended up eating it. That was a Continental Gold or something I put on it. Worst freaking belt I ever had. Probably because it was the worst vehicle to ever put a belt on kind of other than like a Honda CRV or Honda anything. So yeah, OEM, or if I'm going to aftermarket, I'm going for Bando. Why? Because Bando gets the job done. I don't know if that's their slogan. <laughs> the Spool X says he's impressed with my diagnostic skills. Where did I learn those skills? I learned those skills from the L1 Auto Training Diagnostic website. You can go there and sign up for yourself for training at l1autodiagnostics.com. I don't know if that's the website or not. I'm sure Keith can put it on there, but that's where you start. You start by getting training. And uh, I started by trial and error and then by training. So uh, my guy Keith on here, you'll see him in the chat. He's got a blue wrench and uh, he has his website there at www.l1training.com. You can go on there and sign up. And he is one of the smartest people I know, uh, way beyond me when it comes to automotive knowledge. And I have several friends in the industry that are way smarter than me that have excellent YouTube channels and just are a wealth of knowledge. And there's, there's so much out there but you got to get involved, man. Um, you got to get in there. You know, uh, back when uh, Keith was running the Staten Island Express, different Keith, um, brilliant man. Ivan, same way, absolutely brilliant. You got Keith over here at L1, absolutely brilliant. These guys are next level. I'm, I'm here like, <laughs> I'm hanging freaking brakes and changing tires, dude, you know. Uh, you got Scanner Danner out there putting out videos. I'm going to forget somebody. That's why I hate name dropping because I'm going to forget, but we'll fill them in. You guys fill them in in the blanks down there. So, yeah, but that's what you got to do. There's there's so much available. You got the CTI training online. You've got uh, what AG, gosh, I feel like an idiot. A, drawing a blank. That's what happens. Got diagnosed Dan, guy's awesome. Bernie Thompson, next level right there. So, yeah. Uh, how, do I, how do you feel about towing a vehicle there? It's from three and a half hours away. To fix, uh, 2010 Traverse crank position. <laughs> I, I don't feel good about it. You have to rewind the video to watch that part. I appreciate the super chat, but I wouldn't. Um, out of town vehicles are are off my chart and that's a, that is a solid line that I have to draw in the sand. I explained it way earlier in the in the chat. You're gonna need, you know, phasers and chains and all that, but on a 3.6, that's, you're probably at 150,000 miles that needs chains and phasers and guides and the whole deal. And it's probably all wheel drive and dropping the subframes a freaking mess in New York. I would have to respectfully decline it using my nicest voice. So nothing against you, it's nothing personal, it's just, Kick that ball down the road a few times. And I know, I know how it goes. 
uh, can't afford your braces, but this might cover New York tax on a toothbrush floss. Oh, wait, never mind. Get an ice cream. That's what I do. I get an ice cream with that, my guy. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, Steve, you know, he says I'm way too humble, guys, getting ASC dealer shops can't diagnose. No, Steve, that's... It's, not really. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. Like, yeah, I fixed something the dealer can't fix. Ooh, whoop de doo you know. These guys, guys like Keith, guys like Bernie, guys like everybody else but me on there, they're fantastic. They're super smart all the time. They're super smart. I show you guys a video once in a while. I fix the car. whoop de doo you know. You know what I'm saying. He's got an 07 Civic 400 KMs on it. Tech side engine was loud and recommended 1030, 530, and 7, 520. Any thoughts? Want to keep it running a bit longer? I don't know. Has he suggested just doing a valve lash adjustment? Because that's probably where I would start if it was getting a little clattery in the top end. Um, you know, that's that's what I would do if and it were me. I would see where the clattering's coming from, but I don't know if I would just go start dumping the thick oil in it. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the Go Tech Garage, that's Mike over there with the old NGK channel, Ivan at Pine Hollow, which we mentioned Ivan, as Keith just put here. There's so many, there are so many great channels on YouTube that you can learn from. Are you going to go on Scotty and learn something? Probably not. Maybe you will. Um, there's Alex, he said, we've talked a lot throughout the years. Yeah, I'm going to teach some people something. But at the end of the day, I'm just a knuckle dragger over here, man. You know these guys are the these guys are the real deal. Um, so, uh oh, somebody, somebody being naughty. Yeah, diagnose Dan. That guy is awesome. I'd like to get in his head for a few minutes. Maybe I wouldn't. Super Mario. There we go. See, I. This is why I don't name draft. Please, guys, fill in the blanks down here. If you watch, um, if you watch YouTube channels and you know some guys out there that are absolutely brilliant when it comes to diagnostics, by all means. Put them in the box, in the comment box, if you know what I mean. Uh, but, um, anyhow, what else we got here? Um, yeah, Super Mario's great. He's huge in the Euro stuff. He really, watching that young man evolve into the diagnostician, if you will, as he is, uh, has been a great watch and he's, he's incredibly smart. He's very motivated and You know, just watch him just just climb just you know have that growth and You know far beyond me. He likes working on you know, and has where he's at geographically. He works on a lot of European stuff and uh, You know Ivan Ivan takes on these challenges that are just like dude. Why are you even working on that thing? but boom gets through it and, uh, you know, no parts required. He fixes everything with WD-40. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyhow. Um, yep, yeah, uh, do you ever visit? Sometimes, yeah, you've got the IATN network. You've got the DN, the Diagnostic Network, right? Um, there's, 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 so much, there's so much out there that's available to us uh, nowadays. Oh, we got Voltage Drop Diagnostics. Boom, another one. Uh, you'll learn from Scotty. you learn what not to do. Watch Wes work. He's the guy. Uh, Morski Repair are also selling. I don't know that one. That's one I don't know. Watch Wes work. My guy Wes, he's a good man. He's a good man. He's, he's a lot like me. You know, we just do, you know, this kind of stuff. So, <laughs> advanced auto level. Yeah, there, there's, there's so many. I mean, so many guys. Lots and lots out there. And then you got Scotty Kilmer, of course. <laughs> Who doesn't love Scotty, you know? He's going to put out another click bite title. Oh, he's quitting. But we all click on it because we're like, why is he quitting this time? Like, oh, damn it, he got me. Got me again, Scotty. And when he says, this is the worst Toyota, don't ever buy this car ever. You're like, I'm not going to click it. Then you're like, click. Got me again. Man. Guy gets me every time, but now I know after like the 700th clickbait totally put out, I know he's lying. I don't click him anymore. So, but hey, whatever, man. That guy's bankrolling six figures a year off clickbait. Can I blame him? Nope. Is he brilliant? Absolutely. 
Did I just say that out loud? <laughs> Can you do a video on lift safety, best practices, put lift on a frame? Absolutely not, Gary, Robert Gary, because that would be like self-incriminating of a how-to video of how to stay safe. That's why I never show people, uh, you know, make them warnings about PPE and how to stay safe and how to safely lift a car. Just because you, there's a disclaimer at the end of every one of my titles and videos that sums it up. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. I won't ever show anybody safety, how to use a lift safety. When you buy a lift, it comes with a manual of how to lift safety, and you can even get a certificate in that. At our local trade school, you get a certificate of lift safety. Uh, when you use service data, there are parts in the service data. Thanks, Jerry. Merry Christmas to you, buddy. There are parts in service data that tell you and show you how to safely lift the vehicle. So if somebody said to me, how do I safely lift my vehicle? I would say, check service data because that's the cop-out answer. And then I would walk away. <laughs> so there, there's some things you just, you just don't say. Like, how do I safely lift the vehicle? And then the guy gets under it, drops it on his head. Like, well, you told me to pick it up. I'm like, no, dude, I told you to pick up one. This is what I understood. Well. This is why I'm not a teacher and I'm a male entertainer, as I like to tell people. I'm here for entertainment purposes only. So, anyhow. Oh, you get, Michael, don't give Scotty the thumbs down. I, I'm banned on his channel, so I can't even comment. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, CYA in this industry, uh, because there's a lot of Karens out there nowadays, so you have to CYA, which means cover your hiney. Kind of. That's kind of what it means. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, I don't mean to, you know, say that negatively <laughs> at you. Yeah, cover your assets is what that means. Yep. <laughs> um, Martian. Oh, wow, he must be Polsky. Uh I know a guy, I have a customer, his name is Martian. He has a very strong accent, and he's from Poland. Uh, Ivan is a man. He even fixed his house heater with WG-40, but I prefer the Thor as you, Eric. Um, yeah, I'm with him, my guy. And uh, he's like, uh, we're, I'm Polish, too. My last name is Polish, so I'm probably one of the few people that maybe know how to say your name, Martian. At least that's what my customer, whose name is Martian, that's what he tells me. He's like Martian, like the Martian. That's right. So I call him Martian instead of marching or marking. <laughs> uh, Listen, tires all day must mess up your back. Any advice to not mess up your body? I'd say quit your job. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is the industry that I chose with consequences that I know are part of it. You know, it's. I guess perhaps the only advice again, I mean, gosh, I mean, I feel like an idiot with these cop out things. The advice I would give somebody is check with your chiropractor on proper lifting techniques. I'm not going to tell a guy how to lift something up. Use your noodle, uh, perhaps, and maybe Google on YouTube a professional of proper lifting techniques. I don't know. Some days my back freaking hurts. Some days I go home and I go to bed and I wake up in the morning and I go to put on my socks and now you're walking around like Mr. Roboto for the next three or four days because you bent over to put on your socks and you pulled your jiggy witcher. Uh, I would say, you know, exercise beyond, you know, this doesn't count for exercise. Sitting in here, standing on your feet, walking back and forth, that's not exercise. You need some purposeful exercise and stretching, I would say. But, and uh, if you don't want to get hurt at work, have somebody else lift the tires up. I don't know. I don't. I don't really have good advice. I'm, I'm a terrible guy to ask for advice, Gary. Um, yeah, uh, somebody just said to use your lift pad or use uh, your pads when setting your lift arms. That's what I always do. I got a pad by every lift. I throw it on the floor, and uh, but other than that, I guess just aches and pains are normal, man. Um, <laughs> right? I guess. Uh, any way to hard bypass skim on an 07 Ram, like touching wires to go skim module, it shouldn't be touching, thanks for everything. Alvaro, find a guy that has a Drew Tech, and he can go in there and disable the skim for you in the PCM. 
on most things it works on and then simply you know unplug the skim module and then you can delete it out of the out of the PCM but then if somebody ever plugs the skim module back in well you're back in the same boat you had I did it on my Jeep worked fine unplugged it wasn't even having any problems I was just filling with my scan tool so that's what I would do I guess I don't know maybe there's a hard bypass for it but that's that's how I bypassed them so anyways uh, Drew Tech won't work on 07, only on non-can. Well, never mind, dude. <laughs> I had skim on the brain, and that one skimmed right over me. Uh, so maybe Keith knows L1 Auto Diagnostics. Maybe he knows the way to bypass a skim. Maybe you could use HP Tuner or something. I'm not sure, because that's not, I usually just fix it so it's not broke. I don't know how to bypass that stuff. Um, have I ever used Aerocroil Penetrating Oil? Yes, I got a case of it upstairs. I use it off camera, not on uh, YouTube videos, because it doesn't really piss people off like WD-40 does. So, uh, yeah, so Key says use HP Tuner or AEMT tool, whatever that is. I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, but yes, yeah, so yes, uh, I do use Aerocroil. It has a cult-like following. Um, I don't think it's any better than anything else I've ever used, but I'm super impatient too. I usually spray stuff. I count about however long it takes me to pick up the impact and I stick it on it. <laughs> so, uh, Robert Gary, again, and he writes, do you work on EVs? Uh, do you see a time when a lot of work will be on EVs? Uh, Gary, I've never seen one, never popped the hood on one, sat in one, or even looked at one. So, I, therefore, I, I don't work on them. <laughs> and you're ticking all the boxes today, my guy. Uh, do I foresee a time when there will be, um, when I'll work on EVs? We, we, we hit on this a little bit earlier, uh, Robert. And um, that's, <laughs> I guess you got you to gotta rewind to see my answer on that. It was kind of long-winded, but uh, um, yeah, I guess I work on partial EVs. I've worked on some, I've done some head gaskets on some Priuses, but uh, no, being that I've never seen one, nobody in this town even owns one drives one or anything like that got another Robert up in the house so yeah no I maybe maybe there will be a time when it happens but I'm not gonna we're not gonna poke that hornet's nest on here because everybody uh oh reconnecting we're live do we lose you are we back it says that I lost you oh dude uh Super duper super chat contest, bigger super chat wins here. That's no, don't start a super chat contest. Oh man, you guys are gonna get me all, all embarrassed up in here. Uh, yeah, appreciate that. Uh, BRN double C01. Um, oh, we're good. Okay, we're all good. Okay, well, cut out on my end and it said reconnecting. Um, I don't know what that means, but that's what it did. Let's see here. We're coming up on the two hour mark. And it says that it doesn't tell me how much till 1.30 a.m. I don't, I don't know what that means. Um, all good. The audio skipped for a segment. I disappeared. It's the government, man. Now I'm freaking dropping off again. Hang on. I got this thing just balancing here on my computer screen. I'm going to go man down here in a second. Sorry about this, folks. Amateur hour at SMA. Hold on. Dang it all. Who's running this show? This man, I got it kind of sitting up here on my magnet bar. Just kind of, there we go. Boogity boogity. Um, <clears throat> all right, we're all good. Probably, uh, what time is it again? About 8.08. Oh, yeah, the other thing I found that's like impossible to find the other day, I had to get some Pioneer fittings. Who would have thought these things were on infinite back order forever? That was frustrating as like driving 60 miles to pick up a $10 fitting. Uh, anyhow, what, uh, oh, deer season was great this year. I'll fill you in on details. I'm gonna show the people, but it's all on my phone here and that's what we're, uh, anyways. Oh, hey, Merry Christmas to you, Chris. Ho, ho, ho. I sounded like the Green Giant. Is that a ho, 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 Santa Claus or ho, 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 Green Giant? Who remembers that commercial? This guy does. 
uh, nearly lunchtime in Australia, down under. <laughs> hey, you guys remember the Green Giant? Hey, this guy remembers Libby's. Libby, Libby, Libby on the label, label, label. Tastes real good on your table, table, table. <laughs> I remember that one, too. Does that make me old? I don't remember that one, but I remember singing it to my sister because her name is Libby, or her name's Elizabeth, but we always called her Libby. So I used to always sing her the Libby, Libby, Libby song. I'm not that old. Uh, oh, Merry Christmas to you, James, and thank you for letting me entertain you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm 55. I'm not 55. I'm 43. SpaghettiO. Uh-oh, SpaghettiO. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Man, there's so many great... Uh, um, there's so many great things old great movies you know what you know what i've been watching lately because i think the stuff on tv sucks like as a matter of fact we don't have tv we have um <laughs> baloney oscar my b-o-l-o-g-n-a blog now we just had some baloney made we got a bunch of baloney coming back from our, some of our deer meat some baloney some hot dogs some summer sausage and meat sticks and i got a couple of hams smoked too took two hind quarters off one dough and got them smoked 18 bucks to get a ham smoked off a deer not too bad a deal. There's a big shop up here, the Mennonites run. And um, and uh, they, they do some stuff for you. So we got some of the stuff processed, which we, we usually process all our own. <laughs> Kool-Aid! <laughs> uh, yeah, where's the beef lady? I remember that. But at any rate, I was telling you, TV nowadays sucks. TV sucks. There's nothing on but all these stupid shows that are just... I'm not even going to go down that road. We might better talk about EVs and, instead of talking about the woke TV... And what's on the TV now? Anyhow, not even go down that road. I've been reminiscing in old shows, and I've recently purchased the Peacock. Not a real Peacock. Um, let me see what this guy says. Newbie, I've seen you replace tire pressure sensor. I've seen you replace a tire pressure monitor in a single tire. If you're the original owner of the vehicle, why not replace all of them? That's a great question. A, some people are cheap. And B, some people aren't cheap. They just can't afford to do it at the, at the time. Because let's say an average cost is $50 per wheel. Well, they just want to fix the broken one. And sometimes, and more often than not, they don't fix any of them. I try to encourage people, let's just do, well, this car is 12 years old, 13 years old. It's, uh, you know, you need to do, you should just do them off. One's dead. And they'll say, well, let me do one. If another one dies, we'll do the other three. Usually. They're back in a month or two, especially in the winter time. This is when we're going to get really swamped with TPMS lights. Um, they'll come back. So why not? It's personal preference, and it's not mandated in the in the PRNY that we fix them. So that's that's the short answer. Hey, Merry Christmas, Mike and Marilyn. Appreciate you watching. Oh, wait a minute. What happened? Merry Christmas, you and the fam, and thanks for the extremely useful. Well, thanks, MBTJR. I appreciate that. You guys are super generous, and um, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to me. <laughs> but I don't know what to say other than thank you. I mean, we can't, like, hug it out or anything. We could e-hug. I guess I could send you a huggy emoji. But thanks, dude. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about how TV sucks. Uh, we don't do virtual kisses. Come on, Schmitty. You're making it weird, dude. <laughs> no hug. I offer, the, I offer a mug. He doesn't even want an e-hug. But anyhow, uh, what I was talking about is how TV sucks. And um, so I've recently seen that there's really not much good on the Netflix because we have that. So don't watch that much. And the Amazon Prime video, we, we have Amazon Prime and that has videos. And sometimes it has some stuff on there. But I like shows, man, like a TV show. So I got the Peacock. And, dude, they got The Office. Great. I love The Office, Michael Scott, Dwight. They're all my heroes. And then they have Cheers. So we got Sam Malone. We got Carla. And uh, we've got Cliff Clavin. <laughs> Cliff Clavin. I've heard about Yellowstone. There's a guy there, Keith, that tells me I got to watch Yellowstone. We've got Seinfeld and we've got Cheers. And right now I'm on a Frasier Merit. I almost counted that on that finger. A Frasier Marathon. You know, Frasier, Daphne. 
Mr. Crane, Niles, his Maris. Uh, I love watching Frazier. So I've been watching Frazier. I've already been through all of The Office multiple times. I love The Office. And um, so I like watching TV shows because they bring me back to my youth. And they make you forget about this world that we live in where everything sucks. Did I just say that out loud? Um, can I do a Cliff Clavin? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact there, Nami, uh, it's a little known fact that these uh, snap ring pliers are for uh, taking off snap rings there. And, uh, you know, most people don't know that. <laughs> I do a Cliff Clavin all the time. I do Cliff Clavin so much that uh, Mrs. O gets upset with it. <laughs> she doesn't get upset with it. She just, she's not as impressed as she used to be when I used to do the Cliff Clavin. And uh, <laughs> I love Cliff. Yeah, Cliff and Nami. And you know how, uh, you know, Carla, he's always getting after Cliff there. Yeah, just because he lives with his ma, you know. So I love Cliff Clavin. Uh, I don't know if I like Cliff Clavin as a character, but I do like his voice. And it makes me want to move to Boston. <laughs> so, anyhow, I love my Cliff and Nami. And, uh, but yeah, anyhow, I've been watching the, uh, watching the Frasier. I like Frasier. Um, uh, oh, okay, your wife gets sick of your impersonations too. Now I tell you what, Keith, I have some customers, <laughs> I have some customers that, uh, that I can impersonate, which none of you guys would understand. And uh, yeah, yeah, rest in peace, Christy Alley from Cheers. Just passed away, uh, most recently too. But I do, uh, <laughs> I do some pretty good customer impersonations. And Mrs. O really loves them because some of them are pretty funny. I even laugh myself, which is kind of weird. Uh, Eric Paul, 80, he writes, uh, thanks for your knowledge, Mr. O. Can't say enough. You're a great teacher. Hope you and your family have a good Thanksgiving and a Merry Christmas. Uh, you too, Eric Paul, 80, bravo. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, my guy. We did have a good Thanksgiving. Uh, the Percolator 9000, Chevy Cabot, secondary air pump codes. I have replaced the valve and the pump and still have the code. What can I look for next? Have a good night. Chevy Cabot. I'm not sure what that is, but um, I would say, uh, and this is gonna, I'm going to start sounding like a broken record after a while. I would check in service data. I would see what the code set criteria is, and then I would plug in a scan tool, and I would look to see what I'm missing. Is it, what's it basing its secondary air function off from? Is it basing off the function of a pressure sensor in an electric valve? Uh, does it have its own independent pressure sensor? Is it looking at uh, O2 sensor data to verify that the secondary air injection is working? You know, I don't, I don't ever commit anything to memory, to memory that I can look up. So I'm just throwing that out there. Um, I just, I look stuff up. Uh, I know that sounds, I know that sounds silly to say like, I can't believe you don't know the answer to the, you know, I'm getting a P0411 secondary air injection system fall, incorrect flow or something like that. But I would never, I would never memorize it. I would just look it up, see what the code set criteria is and I would see what I'm missing on my scan tool. So that's the best I can do. <laughs> James Young said he had a, a computer teacher in college. He was at, from Boston and sounded exactly like Cliff Clavin. Dude, I could not have taken that class. Merry Christmas, Jordan. Um, <laughs> I could have taken that class if I had to work at Old Cliffy all day, especially if he's given facts. Like, hey, yeah, uh, hey, uh, they have fun fact there. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I would be laughing the entire class and asking them to say certain things. I uh, like Cliff. Um, Anyhow, that's great. That must have been a great class. Um, do you use two different lifts for passenger cars versus trucks, or does one do a good job for both? Yeah, you can use one for both, uh, Ted. If you have a 10,000-pound lift, you're going to pick up any passenger car or, you know, half-ton, three-quarter ton, one ton, as long as it's not modified with, you know, a giant batter box on it, something like that, you know. Because, I mean, a three-quarter ton, 2,500 HD Chevy is only going to come in, you know, ticking the scales at 65 to 6,800 pounds, something like that. So, uh, let's see. Herrick, enjoy the stream. Got a question for you. What's the worst injury you've gotten from working on cars? Have a very Merry Christmas. Well, first of all, a very Merry Christmas to you, 
I miss snow. And the very worst injury I have gotten on cars is a direct hit to my pride. Pride is a dangerous thing, but it's the worst thing that I've had injured working on a car. Nothing will tear a man down worse than defeat, we'll say. Um, and that's probably the worst injury I've sustained working on a car. Yes, I've bled. I've never broken anything. I've had cuts, gashes, smashes, and bruises. All of those heels heal. If I didn't have this metal in my mouth, I could say that. But the worst one that hurts is the sting of the kick to the proverbial sack of pride. That's the worst one. That one doesn't heal. And that's something you have to live with and think about each time when somebody says, what's that car you couldn't fix? Well, I remember. So that would be my worst injury. Thanks, Dylan Humphreys. Humphrey, that's awesome. You are too handsome to be in the shop this late. Merry Christmas. Well, thanks, Joe's Outdoor Power Equipment. And glad you can recognize a handsome guy, too. <laughs> Not, yeah. Anyhow, thanks, Roger. Yay, Cliff. Cheers. <laughs> Everybody loves Cliff Clavin. And I tell you who else I like it on Cheers, this car. Of course, Sam. Everybody likes Sam, but I think my two favorite characters on Cheers are Cliff Clavin and Carla. Because she's meaner than a snake. <laughs> I like Carla. <laughs> I know a lady who's actually like Carla. Still has the same hairdo. Probably mean as Carla, too. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's getting weird again. Um, yeah, Carla's the bomb. But uh, anyway, it's where... Uh, let's see, Keith here, L1 Auto Diagnostic Trainings at L1Trainings.com. 100% uh, truth, I fix all the cars that no one else can around here, but I get implicitly humbled by old Buicks and other crap regularly. Not the Bentleys, Teslas, Mercedes I work on. It's the old crap. It'll do it to you. Oh, okay. He'll try that. Can't type Chevy Cobalt. I understand that you don't keep everything on top of your head. Don't blame me. Just saw it ask. Yeah, so it's going to be, it's, I'm always going to give you the same answer percolated. Is I just look it up. Man, I look up in service data. Where do I find the answer I'm looking for? Where do I find the code set criteria? Where do I find my wire diagrams? Where do I find everybody's like, oh, you're so smart. I'm like, no, I'm not. Dude, I can't hardly remember my kids' names. Yes, I can. Most of the time. Don't ever memorize something you can look up. Your brain's only so big and it can only fit so much crap in there. And I find as I get older, I struggle. And I'm not even that old. I'm 43 years old and I struggle, man. Right now my head struggles and it bothers me to know that I'm starting to forget things. And um, it happens. But don't memorize something you can look up. Get service data, man. The answer's right there. Especially with GM. They have great service data. Look up your... PO 410, 4, like whatever code it is you're getting for your for your secondary air. Look it up, boom, carry out the test. Bada bing, bada boom, done. Robert's your mother's brother. Does Luna stay at the shop? Yeah, she stays at the shop. She lives here. It's her house. She's inside there right now. She's in the office. Probably sleeping. I'm moving my mouse trying to get my thing to go up here on my phone. See? That's what happens. <sighs> wow. I'm down here now. I don't even know where to click. Oh, we're seeing this guy had half me just tore off a fingernail on a left index finger over 20 years ago. Sliding door on an Astro, man. Mother lover, I hate losing fingernails. I've lost everyone except my two pinkies. He's the only two fingernails I've never lost in my career. So I'm all too familiar with the finger rat, fingernail smashing. Renegade Garage says Robert actually was his brother's mother. So actually, Bob's your uncle. I <laughs> love it. Um... Yeah, a smart man may not know the answer, but he knows where to find the answer. And that's what I do. I'm like, oh, I don't know the answer. Hey, Keith, what's the answer? That's what I do. <laughs> uh, once in a while, we have to do that. We got to phone a friend. Um, yep, confirm the fault, read and understand how the system works, view the diagram, create a test plan, confirm the root cause, and repair the vehicle, a.k.a. plan the work, work the plan. That's what I do, and that's what Keith does, and that's what anybody worth their salt does. Smash my finger is one of the worst pains. Uh, only one other place that hurts worse. Well, that place usually doesn't get whacked too much working on cars. At least I hope not. Um, <laughs> but uh, 
yeah, plan to work, work to plan, man. I mean, any any good diagnostic guy is going to tell you. Any of these guys will tell you here, too. There are some things that we have memorized. We have in our noodle, you know, for example, we can look at a three-wire potentiometer and, you know, we can fumble our way through a test, a couple of quick tests. You know, where's my voltage, my ground, my signal? Same thing with O2 sensors. There are certain things that we have committed to memory just because, you know, we know certain wire colors on certain auto makes are, you know, grounds or powers and, and stuff like that. So we can kind of, you know, fit our way through. But otherwise, we're going to look it up. Fixing cars is 80% research and 20% doing. Sometimes 90% research, 10% doing. Sometimes it's 99% research and 1% saying, oh, yeah, well, that's the problem. So that's that. Uh, his worst injury is probably accidentally missing where I was hitting with a hammer straight to the knee. Thought I was going to throw up. Oh, gosh, that's insane. Um, yeah, Kuba says that 80 to 85 percent is common and the rest must be looked up. Yeah, I would say there's I probably look up more than that. I mean, a lot of stuff is common knowledge, but um, I look a lot of stuff. I look up everything. Are you kidding me? I pay too much a month for service. They did not look it up. <laughs> Um, more techno videos looking for a rave, brother. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> uh, thanks for being a great leader, amazing example for all techs, brother. Thanks, Polly. Hope you're doing well, man. Catch you around out there on the YouTube once in a while. Thanks, James. Um, what's my favorite tool under a hundred dollars? I'd have to really think about that one hard, my guy. Uh, love your great content and your awesome taste in movies. Austin Powers, Super Troopers, a Lego movie, which I often quote. And you have a Merry Christmas, meow. <laughs> I love that guy, Ben Brown. <laughs> Downtown Brown. Austin Powers, the Super Troopers. <laughs> What's so damn funny, meow? <laughs> yeah, Tommy Boy. I do a lot of Tommy Boy quotes. That's all right. That's fun. Um. Yeah, three 10 millimeter sockets, that's right. Um, <laughs> what's the uh, PRNY mean? It means the People's Republic of New York, because we live in this sick communist state of New York. People are like, why don't you move? I'm like, why don't you wait till I'm retired? Then I'm gonna flush this toilet like everybody else around here. You can't even get a freaking U-Haul. They will pay you to bring the U-Haul back. There are so many people leaving this state. We're not gonna talk about that. So, anyways, that's what it means. The PRNY. Yeah, Chris Farley's funny, but he's dead. So, um, I was going to tell you guys something. I got to scroll back up to see if I can refresh my memory here. I don't remember what the heck we were just talking about because my memory is about as long as. I'm... Oh, yeah, it was the accidental hammer there in the knee you guys talked about. I remember uh, one of my friends. His name's Andy. He's probably watching the show. He lives down the street. Dump truck driver. Good guy. No nonsense. No one. Love the knowledge you share, man. Best channel on here to help keep me motivated. and start putting out repair videos years ago. Keep killing it. Hey, no nonsense. No how. Go check out his videos. Thanks for the super chat, buddy. But I was talking about... Don't mean to switch gears on here. It's Andy lives down the road. Good guy. Dump truck driver. That's where we're at. I think you guys may have seen him in a couple of videos, at least heard him, but he smoked my dad right across the knees one time, full baseball bat swing with a sledgehammer. And uh, I remember <laughs> he was always, my dad was a pretty big man and he was over helping Andy. They were changing out the dump truck box on the back of his dump truck and they're knocking the pins out of it or you know, they're working on suspension or something, taking the camel backs off something. Anyway, it was sledgehammering. And Andy's swinging the sledgehammer, full baseball bat swinging this thing. And he missed, and he come right across my dad's legs, took him right out. And uh, I remember Sonny told him, that's my dad, Sonny, that he was going to pay him back for that someday. Of course, you know, he walked away immediately. Andy went and hid because he thought he was going to get murdered. He tells the story better than I do. Maybe if he's home and he's listening, he can come down and tell the real story. He told it at my dad's funeral because he finally felt that he was now safe because my dad told him he didn't going to know when. And he isn't going to know how, but he was going to pay him back for it. So I think he feels safe now that my dad's dead, that he's no longer going to get payback for full baseball bat swinging him with a sledgehammer across the knees. So that story you're saying about hitting yourself in the leg with your hammer and your knees, it reminded me of that story. So anyways, <laughs> that's got to suck. 
I don't know if he, I haven't seen Andy in the chat here every once in a while. I catch him up in here, but anyways. <laughs> Yeah, you know, maybe he does have something rigged up for him and Andy just hasn't found it yet. <laughs> but, uh, yep, um, anyways, uh, what do we got here? Oh, there's some little side combo going on down here. I don't know what's something, Doug doing something going on here. Uh, let's see. I think we're slowing down. Oh, is there, is there legitimately 2,900 people watching two hours later? What is going on with you folks? What's going on with our chat? Um, have I thought about expanding my shop? I have, and the thought is no. Uh, I'll never expand my shop. I'm at uh, max capacity here. And when it comes down to it, and it's all over, and the fat lady has sung, I just want to be gone. And I don't want to have to, I don't know. I like my small shop. I like one guy. Um, buy the laundromat. <laughs> Trust me, dude. I want to buy a laundromat. And expand so I can have a bigger parking lot. <laughs> All right, see you later, Michael. Now that lunch is over in uh, Australia. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? Frig. I'm past my, uh, past my point here. Um, oh, hey, thanks, Ron. Uh, thanks for your videos from Stan Salaus Towing in Minnesota, California. I'm terrible with the pronunciations. Well, thank you, Ron. We appreciate that, buddy. Smell recovery center. No, no, we didn't talk about that. What was we just talking about? Gosh, I'm such an idiot. I'm starting to lose my mind. I don't mean to keep looking down. Um, we'll keep looking up here. Oh, expanding not an option. Yes, that's what we were talking about. Expanding the shop. Thank you. I got too many things going on in my mind. I uh, appreciate that. But I like I like being small like this because I do like to take time off. Um, I'm a terrible boss and I'm a terrible manager. I'm terrible at delegating jobs to people and delegating responsibility. It makes me envious of my guy, Keith, from L1 Auto Diagnostics because he is insanely good at that. And his business rapidly grew and it, and it, it explosively took off. And he's very talented and, and smart, not just in automotive repair, but in business, business management, how to take care of his employees and expand his business. And he's, I don't know where he puts his brass buttons, but he has to have them somewhere because he is brave enough to venture where Likely, I wouldn't ever venture because I like to have, well, to have the proper 2022 terminology. Thanks, Florida Two Wheel Adventures. To have the proper terminology, I need my safe place. That's a word that we can use nowadays. I like to feel safe and secure the best we can, although life is never certain to us. Any of us, anybody that knows anything knows that. But I like to feel that I have some bit of control of the outcome of my life, which ultimately I don't. A little bit of it I do, but really I don't. I can walk outside and get smoked by a car. I can fall off my stool. Hell, my heart could quit beating right now. We don't know that. But at any rate, my feeble attempt to be safe, I like to have safe places. <laughs> I hate using that word. I just think it's funny. So, uh, so I don't ever venture out and expand my shop, nor do I want to. Um, and when I like to go somewhere, I like to just close down my shop. I don't want to be worried about who's here, who's running my shop, what the, what the shop's doing. If there's a problem, does the building burn down? You know, what's, who's running my business? I like to just leave and say, Josh, here's your pay for the week. I'm going to be gone. I pay him for the whole week. The kid gets like four weeks paid vacation every year. He does pretty good in that regards because every time i take a day off we all take a day off and that's just how it is i close down for a week of deer season i close down for thanksgiving i close down for christmas i close down for a week of vacation gets paid every single time here i'm going to pay you to stay home and i like to have that ability so that's that's why i like to stay small and i'm glad that i'm the size that i am not physically this way but business wise so yeah I like it like that. I like it a lot. <laughs> um, 
certainly have issues delegating too. Hard to find people who have as high standards as you do to work. That's correct. And that's and that's how I feel about it too. Um, well, Keith, it's not just kind words. I'm not just trying to blow smoke up you. And I've told you a dozen times, I've probably sent you some sentimental text saying that I envy your process that you do and I'm very proud of you speaking to you like like an old man. <laughs> I'm proud of what you do. It's it's inspiring to me to see to see what you do and to see how you operate your business and to see how you've progressed and to see that it's successful and to see that you're not afraid of taking these tasks. I know on the inside you might be a little bit scared, but you sure don't portray it on the outside. But I know on the inside you probably have a we all have a little bit of self doubt. But the fact that you can look past it and move on and do what you do is inspiring. And I hope it's inspiring to other people that know you too. I feel like we should hug. When I see it TST, then we'll hug. <laughs> you can you can hug me, I guess. Uh, anyways, Dan W. writes, uh, Thanks for sharing your knowledge. I work on helicopters, but I've taken countless lessons from you improving my electrical diagnostics. Well, good. Keep them helicopters up in the air because they don't want to use, what do they call it, free rotor? What is it when a helicopter falls and you get the one last chance to yank up the collectors and let her not die? <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, uh, thanks for working on helicopters for us. Um, hello, and thank you for all your awesome, wow, Morris, Morrison virus. I don't even know what that is. Morrison virus? Uh, you have a very generous super chat. Auto rotation is what it's called. That's when you're about to die, but you have auto rotation. And I think they, where they pull up on the collective. Watch some videos on it because I'm fascinated by helicopters, and I think it's fun, and I want to ride in one, but I'm scared to death. Um, <laughs> Anyhow, uh, th thank you for your awesome videos showing both techniques and solutions. Love your channel and your content. Thanks for being cool, man. Another one of your subscribers from California. Well, thank you, uh, Mosin Virus. Hopefully, it's not putting a virus on our computer. Um, thank you, Chris Rowland. Appreciate that, buddy. Um, and then we have uh, the Straker. TPMS follow-up. As an original owner, would you recommend replacing all sensors at a single failure, or is it gauged by how old the vehicle is? I think we've covered this a little bit. Short story, if the car is more than 10 years old, one TPMS has failed, I would say yes, get after it. Boy, if you can afford it, do it. I use aftermarket sensors here. Um, so, yeah, I always encourage my customers to do so, but I also tell them, I scanned them all. This is the one that's broken. I can do this one, we can do all four, it's up to you. So, um, anyways, uh, what are they? Uh, let's see, what uh, where are we at here? Uh, he said, you should try flying a helicopter, Eric. It's like trying to juggle bowling pins while standing on a beach ball. Oh, wow, that sounds like a good time. All I would want to know is that if the guy that's piloting knows how to use auto rotation, that's all I want to know. You Can you save me on a crash? Do you know how to use it? <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Austin Powers, Waters, Walters, right? He's got, he's got an 04 Wrangler. Using stuff I've learned from you, I've discovered a bad PCM. I'm not sure the other shop, low voltage spike enabled skim when there was no module present now or ever was, no chipped key ever. The only way that I know that you can enable skim, and I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, is by, ins I assume maybe you put in a used PCM. If a used PCM had skim in it, in a non-skim vehicle, and it has skim. I've seen people around here swap columns. They put in a skim, they put in a used ignition column, plugged it, or the steering column, plugged it in, boom, bada bing, your car's done. You know, yeah, I don't know how they could have enabled skim. Keith will fill in the answer. <laughs> uh, let's see. Blessings to you and the fam for Christmas, Erico, and thanks for the knowledge and laughs along the way. Merry Christmas to you, uh, TJ McLaughlin. McLaughlin, did I say that correctly? Hopefully. <laughs> um, gonna say adios. Adios, Don. Adios, muchacho. Get to the chopper. <laughs> Skim. Uh, yeah, you're sick. Security key immobilizer, I think is what it stands for. 
And, uh, oh, what do we got here? Uh, uh, Jack Attack. He, uh, he writes into Cliff Clavin, and I'll read this in the Cliff. I'll try to get my best uh, Cliff Clavin going on. It's a, uh, hey, no Nami there. It's a, a little known fact that the uh, tan became popular in what's known as the uh, Bronze Age. <laughs> Century key immobilizer module. Thanks, Keith. He's always like, make me, see, he always fills in the blanks. And yeah, let me get Cliff Clavin. Uh, how do your customers with Ford's uh, DCT live with it? I need tips to get the most out of my car. Well, to be honest with you, Charles, the 90% of them that have the DCT transmission live at the Ford dealership. Uh, <laughs> uh, the majority of them are sitting at the Ford dealership. I mean, I had one in here the other day. It was there for, I think, seven months. It came in, you know, com brakes completely rusted solid. Everything for them was on back order. So, I mean, that's how most people live with them. They live with them by, A, taking them to the crusher, B, leaving them at the dealership forever, C, selling them somebody on Craigslist, and don't try to lowball me. I know what I got. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, those dry clutch, dual clutch transmissions, they are garbage. Um, what else we got going on here? My, I'm probably missing everything. I always miss everything. Um, Craigslist rebuild. <laughs> this guy says he's buying an 06 Mustang 405 speed for 5,500 US dollars, 35,000 miles. Any thoughts on reliability or any common problems to look for? I can't really comment on that. PNG gaming, RNG gaming. Simply because I, I don't see a lot of those Mustangs, but if it's a 06 and it's a 40 and a five speed, that's a good start. Great engine, good transmission. 5,500 bucks seems too cheap to be true with 35,000 miles on it. If it's a rust free car, hammer down, my guy. That seems kind of cheap, though. Hopefully, it's not a scam. Hopefully, you don't end up on a missing person list when you show up at the Craigslist buyer's house to buy the said Mustang or. They just need you to send a money order and they'll ship it to you. Don't do that. I think it's a scam. <laughs> but yeah, I don't... Uh, oh, you're in Canada. What the heck am I talking about? I think it's probably rotted right clean in half. <laughs> so yeah, I don't... I don't... I only work... I only have like two customers that have those cars. Um, oh, he says it has some body damage, minor stuff. Yeah, if it's... If you're up in the Northeast or in the North in Canada... I'd be checking that baby for rust. And 06 Mustang here, we wouldn't even be able to put it in the shop. It would break in half. If it is from down south, like somebody just wrote, my guy James, maybe it's a flood car. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. But. Oh, man, Ron's here. Can you please give a shout out to my wife, Stephanie Hannock? She loves watching your videos. Well, here's to you, Stephanie Hannock. I don't know how to do a shout out. I do know that Ron loves you very much. He sent me an email the other day declaring his love for you. And I was touched and moved by it. So you got a good man there, Stephanie. Take care of him and he'll take care of you. That's the best I can do off the cuff. <laughs> we'll talk later. Anyhow. <laughs> I don't know how to do a shout out, but that's, that's, all, that's all I got for you. <laughs> you really did email me though. I'm telling you, Stephanie this, Stephanie that. I'm like, I can't keep reading this, man. <laughs> oh, sneaky, 1369er, drove to Batavia from Central Florida. Uh-oh, we're on battery saver mode. We need to wind it up. Sneaky, 1369er, drove from Batavia to Central Florida last fall. Passed your shop and wanted so badly to stop by and meet you, but out of respect, I didn't, because I know you're busy and not crazy about fans stopping by. Um, that's okay. You could have snapped in Sneaky, 1369er. I might not recognize you, but now that I know what your face looks like, I'll recognize you. But, uh, yeah, you know, if, you're, if you're cruising by, stop in and give a what's up. I'll give you a T-shirt. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, yeah, but we are in battery saver mode. So just letting you know, uh, related question on my Ford, the battery light has been on for two years. 
how worried should I be? <laughs> I wouldn't be worried at all, Charles, because in two years, if that light's still on, by golly, that's charging. I'll tell you that. So I wouldn't be worried about it until your lights start getting dim. Then I'd be like, you know what? I should have fixed that freaking light because then I would know a alternator is going bad, which it likely could be a bad alternator anyways. Being a Ford could be a bad PCM. It's a PCM controlled alternator. Could be a bad, uh, whatever, instrument cluster, something, something like that. <laughs> plug in my phone. I don't have a plugger here for it. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is the first time I've ever seen my phone this low on charge. Hey, it's hands on Brian, hands on auto training. Also does great videos. We, we were talking about Brian, I don't mean to just drop the bomb on you, but we were talking earlier about other folks on the YouTube that do great automotive videos. Brian, awesome, excellent, smart guy, great, great guy. I like, I like going out and watching this stuff. It comes quick, and boom, he blows through these case studies. And that's what I like watching. I like watching case studies. And he always, he always has a lot of those. But, uh, but uh, yeah, always learning. I mean, he's got some good stuff on there. So definitely shout out. At any rate, we probably ought to wind her up a little bit here, all right? Um, because the, the phone beeped. And we're a couple hours in, two and a half hours in. Who's got time to watch this crap? And uh, at any rate, we gotta we gotta wind it down. So start unclicking. Um, what do we got here? Yeah, well, you know, I I can give the heads up for the uh, for the what's up Wednesday, but they're super random. I hate promising and not being able to keep it. Like, hey, next week we're gonna do a what's up Wednesday, and the next week comes, and I'm like, I don't feel like doing what's up Wednesday because I hate people and I don't want to talk to anybody. Did I just say that out loud? Anyhow, you get the point. All right, let's just say I got busy. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't get notifications either on a lot of channels, Smitty, which is weird. Some channels I get over notified, other channels I don't. But at any rate, we do need to wrap this up. I've played with this little bolt here, like a fidget tool, so long that my finger's black, so I need to go wash them. And I've wrapped a T-pin around it poked a hole in this piece of paper about 300 times. Um, can you call Frank a douche? Who's Frank? And is he really a douche? And if he is, stop being one of those, Frank. I can only say it twice. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, anyways, I don't even know what to say. We were saying goodbye, and I'm pretty bad with goodbyes, so... It was good seeing all you guys. We'll wrap it up like this. And uh, we could wrap up the whole thing into Cliff Clavin here and uh, <laughs> your fun facts. But I think we'll just wrap it up in a normal, yeah, yeah go out snipe hunting. Who hasn't seen that episode? Great episode. <laughs> go out snipe hunting. Poor Frazier left him out there in the wild. But <laughs> we can't get sidetracked here. We need to say goodbye. And this is how we're going to do it. Appreciate all the Super Chat folks, and I appreciate you folks that just like to tune in and watch, which is really awesome, too. And I appreciate you guys going out to all the other channels that we mentioned and clicking that subscribe button on all their channels and checking them out and getting involved in their channels and training and everything else that you can do to better yourself and be a better human. And uh, just thanks for stopping by and, and all that. I hope you guys enjoyed your time here hanging out. Losing my train of thought because I'm hungry. My blood sugar's low. And uh, listening to us talk and rant and rave about certain things. and We've enjoyed that. And that's it. That's all I've got to say. You guys got anything else to say before I click off? Out of here. Oh, yeah. Merry Christmas, and even uh, Merry Christmas to all you people who don't like saying Merry Christmas. When you see somebody that you don't even know, wish them a Merry Christmas. Shake your hand. Be nice. Be kind. Open the door for people. Don't be a jerk. That's why I always tell my kids, just don't be a jerk, man. That's all we ever ask. Don't be a jerk. The world will be a lot better place with a lot less jerks. So uh, you guys have a good night. We love you too for everybody who's given that. 
Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. We'll see you around before then. I'm sure we'll try to do another super chat. And uh, and I guess that's it. Now it's gonna get weird because I don't know how to turn this thing off. We gotta hit the little X here. And uh, thanks for watching. We're gonna hit the stop and the okay. Oh.